everyone's having a good day. Welcome on in. Right, let me let me swap some things around quickly. Make sure I'm all in place. Hi, Toasty. Welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. Oh, dear. Right. Where do I need to go? It's this one. Hello. Welcome on in, everyone. I hope you're all having a good day. I'm going to be doing some embroidery and some stuff basically for the petticoat so that it has proper straps today. That's the plan. It's, it's relatively chill because we've had quite a intense week. A tense week of sewing. If anyone hasn't seen the finished dress, I've now posted it. I think everywhere so I think it's on Instagram Twitter and discord so you should be able to find it somewhere we finished that on Wednesday after hand stitching it for hours <laughs> so much. Oh my god! thank you for the horn welcome on in shifty I hope you're having a good day oh my god that game you were playing yesterday <laughs> what is it is it Metal Gear oh. <sighs> oh. it's got a lot of character huh <laughs> thank you for the horn Right, so yeah, today I plan making making straps and doing some embroidery. I did actually start this embroidery last night, but then it was getting a bit late and I was just a bit worried about the noise, so I figured I'd I'd do the rest of it today. Metal Gear Rising Rev Revengeance. Is revengeance a word? <laughs> is is that a real word? Or is that like a Metal Gear word? Also, you have to excuse me, I did some sanding on my desk. Uh, yesterday, which I don't normally do. I normally do all my sanding outside, but because it was like a, what do you call it, like quite a small amount of sanding, I figured I'd just do it up here, and there is still, there's still sanding dust on my desk. <laughs> like, <laughs> get it all gone, get it all gone. Um, yeah, basically, uh, where can I show you it? Where did I put it? Here. Um, I've started getting the stuff ready for the hair, so these are going to be my hair pieces. But because they're 3D printed, I think, there's a bit of a roughness on the back of them, basically. So I've just been sanding that down. And then I'll plastic coat the whole thing and then get it painted. But I've already done one and he already created so much dust. I don't know if I'll do the other one in the house now. Um, but yeah, I got my little, my little snake hair things. This will eventually be part of the headpiece. What do you think? It's nice, right? <laughs> Oh dear, honestly, the tails of these wiggle snakes have just been perfect. It's exactly what I needed and it's much cheaper than I think doing it any other way because uh, these are like a couple quid each. <laughs> They're also like, I don't know, they make good noises. You feel it? You feel it? Oh, it's pretty good. It does sound like a fake word, but it's actually a real word. Oh my god. They, they dug out that old word from the dictionary. Uh, what's the theme? Exclamation mark cosplay. Exclamation mark cosplay will take you to the picture of the costume we're making. I would also say if you haven't seen the dress we made on stream, Toasty, you might want to visit the Twitter or the Instagram. <laughs> that way you can see a picture of what we've been working on. Just kidding. Oh, it's not a real word. Okay, I was going to say, it really doesn't sound like one. Oh, dear. Right. Well planned today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch you screens really quickly. There you go. Because as you can see, I've already started part of it in here. So I need to change the thread because at the moment it's going to have the wrong thread in it. Uh, we need gold thread. But this was part one of four and these will be going on the headpiece. Yes. Because the headpiece also has embroideries on it. Not very many, nothing like the dress, but like, you know. More like the assless chaps where there's one major embroidery and the rest of it's just decorative more like that honestly which it's fine that's nice and easy for me to handle to be honest i like that what's the ironing board are you quite all right there you go <laughs> and then get this one in there come on come on come on come on Go get that threaded in there. And we'll have this running off to one side while we do anything else. I don't know if I'll, I'll immediately start making the straps. They're not too difficult. I know they need to be 66 centimeters long. Because <laughs> I have I have this, which uh, is what I kind of used to base how long I wanted it on. And that's 66 centimeters. 66 centimeters it is, a bit of a weird one, but that's all right. Let's put that back in there for now. Oh, not, not stick. Uh, go into here. Try to... Oh no, it's not try to, is it? It's... 
My bad. It's in this folder. I made a new folder on here and it's making me very confused. Um, and then... I think it's that one. Yeah, that looks right. Uh, let's push it all the way to this side. Ah! Oh god! <laughs> Got him! Welcome on in, ha! Huh? Ah oh dear, it's just a mix of the words revenge and vengeance. I wondered if that's what it was. Also, thank you for the snack break. Give me two seconds. I'm just gonna get my boy machine set up. And then I'll be right with you with a snack. Right, I'm gonna need to loosen this off a bit because I have it quite tight. The other thing is, I don't want to be doing too much with my hands at the moment because I'm kind of recovering from the work we did earlier in the week. And yeah, otherwise maybe I've done some beading or something like that, but I, t <laughs> I need a bit of a break from beading, I think. My hands are like, shot. <laughs> Is that gonna be too tight still? Oh, physically we can fit that in, that's a good start. So what I'll do is, put this in where I want it to start, which is about there. And then line it up like that. Okay, put that in there. It just about fits. It's quite tight, but that's okay. And then we'll do a little tester to see if this is going straight the whole way down. I think it should be, but better to check with this sort of thing. I'm also just going to tighten it a little bit. Are you straight the whole way down? Be amazing if you were. Ah, uh, not quite. Not quite, that's okay, we can do that again. It's just a bit off to the side, which is not, not ideal. I mean, I can fix that now as well, so it's not like it's the end of the world. It needs to be a bit more like this, I believe. Yeah, there you go, that's better. Okay, nice. Right. I actually have a lot of snacks today. I'm gonna have the shortbread biscuits. I, have a, I just have a lot. I have pears downstairs as well. Very exciting. minutes now. Nice. And it's just gonna chug away. start to see it as it pokes out. Hmm. Ah, oh dear. But yeah, the plan today, let that do its thing, but also make some straps. <laughs> Which I think are line with... The thing is, I don't want to make them too thick the whole way down, but they do need to be strong. So I think what I'll do is I'll use curtain fabric to make them. Maybe make... I think I need to buy a strip tape actually. I'll just do like the tube and turn it inside out. But uh, make a couple of tubes, but then the top of the tube cover it in like some of the softer fabric that we have because there's quite a lot of weight on my shoulders. Look 
for it. Two seconds. Walter, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. I'm just going to go grab some ribbon quickly. Uh, if we have any thick ones. I'll go see if we have any thick ones first. They're kind of all in the box right now. Because I'm happy. shown you guys this yet but like wow i'm not gonna be able to use it for this project unfortunately uh it's already designed enough that i don't need extra stuff however oh yo 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 i used to see you welcome on in i hope you're having a good day hoya it sounds very grand very grand oh and thank you for the luck shift yeah i appreciate it have a lovely rest of your day you can listen to you talking it's how to go to sleep again oh bless you thank you i'm sorry about the chugging then very loud steam today comparatively yeah this is the sparkly stuff it was clearance so i got like three meters of it and oh it's so intense but i love it if i ever make another stone suit of armor there you go <laughs> now i'm gonna use this one for the straps it's a little bit thicker and i think it'll be a good base i wouldn't normally use ribbon but why not no one's gonna see it and it's strong so put my lighter over here the dress is done yeah so i to see i've got pictures on instagram and twitter and the discord so you can you can see it anywhere um i do actually have some pictures of me wearing it but it's not i haven't posted those because i hadn't done the alterations at that point so i really need to wear it again so that i can i can get those proper pictures there was a couple of alterations i needed to do i had to add a what do you call it a wire to the front of the dress because the embroidery is so heavy that it just sort of folds over on itself which yeah it doesn't look as good unfortunately so what i've done is i put a little wire down the bottom so that at least that bit stays flat most of the time it's like a modeling wire as well so it's pretty easy to bend check it out it's been a while works keeps it busy has it been good though has it been good work i hope so should be a pretty good base of course I do want these to be the same <laughs> the same length I love that there you go yeah there you go that's good right I'll put that back away again in a minute <laughs> after streaming probably and then gotta singe the end of my ribbons just to stop them fraying and then do the other side and then i can get rid of this this unfortunately i normally wouldn't get rid of it but it's stretched to the point where i'm like i don't think i can use this anymore uh weekend free heck yeah good i hope, I hope you have a nice relaxing weekend okay oh, i don't need this right now what I do need is to make a little tunnel of, of padding, basically, so that my shoulders can get have that sewn into it and don't feel it so much. <laughs> these are going to look a little silly, to be honest, because these are not the colours of my cosplay. However, uh, I need it. <laughs> or do I want to use the proper wadding? I could also use the proper wadding. Dare I mention hot cross buns? Oh my god. Have you got hot cross buns? Lovely. Oh, love a good hot cross bun. Right, how long am I gonna need this? Realistically, probably not that long. It just needs to be the top of my shoulders, really. So do I wanna make make it out of wadding? Probably not. I think I could. 
me go grab it. It's the other side of the room. Everything's the other side of the room today. There you go. <laughs> uh, okay. It's a big piece. But if I sew into it, it will flatten a little bit, is my thought. How long do I want it? Where have I put my ruler? Ooh, good question, mate. Sorry, it's because it's I changed setups from uh, from the beginning of the week to the end of the week. So basically, you know, it's, everything is where like I was working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> and not on my desk where I normally work. Oh, got a little bit more at the bottom. Okay. See, I'd say. 20 centimeters sounds plenty. And it doesn't need to be that thick. I feel like I could probably do it about that thick and it'd be fine. Uh, also, I should probably change the thread on here, should I? I kind of sit here pondering. Oh, I could change the thread since the next bit is 13 minutes. Okay. Let's just trim a couple threads in here, like that. There you go, very nice. And then we need this one. There you go. That in there. And this one up here. Go. And that under there, this one through there. Pretty sure I cut this purple out of a scrap because it's a bit of a weird shape to be honest. Ugh. I think it's big enough, but because I need a little bit of extra space around this side to do the rest of the circle, I think it's enough. A bit difficult to say, but regardless, I guess we'll have to make it work because I. I don't want to keep doing embroideries over and over again if I don't need to. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you for the party, I see ya. I put my banana in here. Heck yeah! Oh dear. We like to party. We like, we like to party. We like to party. We like, we like to party. We like to party. We like, we like to party. We like to party. The Fanga bus is coming and everybody's jumping. We go to San Francisco and interstate free disco. The wheels are still up there. And traffic lights are burning. And if you like the party, come on and bring your party. Okay, I'm just cutting this bit off because it's a little uneven on the end. And I kind of like to do it in a straight line if I can. <laughs> I think that'd look good. So let's cut that little extra bit off. How are you doing, Jason? You having a good day? I hope so. Also, Jewel, welcome on in. I hope you're also having a good day. Welcome on in. Oh, heck yeah. Look at all the disco happening. I need to cut this in a nice straight line, really, I think. Uh, if I put little pen marks in it, it shouldn't have to be much thicker than this. And I also don't want it much thicker than this. Up to there. And then I can cut this in two, and we can have that for both straps. Because think if it's too big, it'll be very bulky under the dress. It's not what I'm looking for. Actually, I should probably do it again at some point when I'm... <laughs> oh no, I'm not making straps for that, am I? No, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I was like, when I make straps for the wings. But I'm not I'm not doing that anymore. That's happening differently. Let's go and just clip straight onto the dress corset. There you go. Good. Two little, two little rectangles. I'll even them out in a second. Let's just get that there. Now, do they look thicker than the straps? I don't think so. I think these are okay. I think our little, our little strap sausages are fine. <laughs> this should be good. Now, whatever quote comes will be the rest of my afternoon. Women keep ending up in my... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Jason. I swear. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Let's... A little pin halfway through, shall we? 
Oh, I strawberry pop prepping dinner, heck yeah. Also, Tisa, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. We're doing a little bit of multitasking today because we are working on the embroidery, but also on this. A bit of both. There you go. Should be about the center point for both of them. And then move that, move that, move that. Uh, I probably want this on the other side. And where's the middle part for you? About, actually I could probably just draw it, right? There you go. About there. Line that up with the pin. And then... Da -ba -da -ba. I will cover this in some purple, just in case you can see it. But I'm going to sew it onto here first so it becomes a little bit flatter. Oh, that's not a good pin. Oh yeah, no, not, not, not on that one. I need to do. <laughs> I'll start pinning on that side, but then I'm gonna flip over and actually pin it on this side. <laughs> because I remember sewing over that stuff with a sewing machine is a pain. But if I have it on this side, it's not as bad. There you go. There you go. How are you feeling? How are you feeling, Dr. Jelly? I'm not Dr. Jelly, but I am okay, thank you. I'm a little sleepy, but that's about it. Just a little sleepy. Wonderful morning! I hope everyone's having a good day. You too, Az! I hope you're also having a good day. Welcome on in. We are just pinning some bits. These are going to end up being straps for the petticoat. Which I know might sound a little weird, because like, why does the petticoat need straps? But it's quite heavy, because it is like 100 meters of <laughs> strips of sh cotton sheeting. So it becomes quite hefty, right? It looks great, but it is quite hefty. So my thought is... If we put some little like shoulder bits in it that kind of add a little bit of poof, that I won't feel it as much. Oh dear. It's zero the best. <gasps> it is zero! Welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. Gangs are here, quote. Oh, the quotes have a five minute cooldown. I to see ya. Uh, don't worry about it. It just, it just that's why it's not coming up for you. It's not you. It's the uh, it's the cooldown. It's lovely and sunny in Wales here, here in the Midlands. It is sunny. It's cold though. It's sunny but chilly, you know? We got we got some warm, not warm weather, some bright weather, but not some warm weather. <laughs> then again, yesterday we also had a hailstorm, so you know. <laughs> that was quite something. I should have asked Shifty if they had a hailstorm too while they were here, but I forgot. So yeah, yesterday we had a, a hailstorm here, and it was very dramatic. Oh dear, it's fine, yeah. Just finished up a 72 hour charity hot tub stream. Boy, am I pruny. Wow, good on you, Zero. Good on heckin' you. That's a very long charity stream. Congratulations, did it go well? Oh dear. I don't know how I missed all 72 hours of it. That's crazy. That's crazy. down one side then we'll get it down the other side and then we'll start crisscrossing it should really have it <coughs> and a slightly looser stitch type but that's okay hey you know we got there eventually all right move that one i'll come back to you okay don't worry you'll get your time but I need to do some crisscrosses here. And then... And then... Crisscrosses. It doesn't really matter what these look like. It just, it just matters that they're here, you know? You won't see any of this, but hopefully I should feel it and it'll be nice and comfy. Oh dear, I raised 40 gajillion dollars, whoa, without 
doctors about morals. That's how I like my doctor. Cyber, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. How are you doing? We've been very busy this week, but we're doing well. We're finishing things. It's really more effective. It is, yeah. Oh, dear doctors without morals. Oh, speaking of, though, actually, good segue. Uh, a member of the community here who also streams, I think, therefore, I, Tom, is doing a charity stream. I think it's at the end of next week. Oh, it might be the beginning of week after. Um, I believe, I don't know if it's specifically the doctor's one, but it is for something uh, for Ukraine, basically. So, hey, if you guys are looking for another charity stream after Zero's incredible charity stream over the last 72 hours, and there you go. You can check out I think they're for top. Oh. Right, now we go back up again. And then... And keep going up. going on double chug oh dear think good very hungry but i have to wait until stores open to get food no have you run out of your supply of snacks it's a dangerous position to be in especially as a streamer cyber you need good supply of snacks at all times and i feel it i've had it happen a couple times recently i've completely run out of snacks and i've been at a loss a loss for what to do there you go I have time and have no motivation for this Oh, bless you, board. Thank you. That's very heckin' kind of you. Also, welcome, and I hope you're having a better day. I hope your day gets better. To be fair, if you end up making something, I'm sure it'll feel, feel like, wow, there we go. We got something. Okay. That is kind of a base for a strap, so, yeah. <laughs> It's not quite so tall once you sew into it, but it should be nice and cushy going over here now for, for my straps. Heck yeah, is that about right? Where's the rest of it? There it is. Yeah, honestly, that feels like what I wanted. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. So then I just need to cover it in fabric so that it doesn't look quite like this. But I'll do the other side first so that we get them both in this state while my machine gently chugs. <laughs> I saw the finished dress on Instagram, it looks incredible. So weird to see all those separate pieces you've been working on finally come together, right? <laughs> we were sewing it together, the rest of it. We did quite a lot on Wednesday. And like, it, it, it looks, it looked weird even when I was sewing it together, to be honest, until everything was there. It was like, something's not quite right. Something's not quite right. And then we put it all on and it was like, there you go, that's better. <laughs> it, it, needed, it needed every single piece. Otherwise it looked a bit funky, but oh, it's so good to have that done. I have it hanging on the wall over there at the moment because like it's it's really heavy and putting on anything else feels a bit worrying. But um, yeah, no, it's really cool. And we, I added the bits back that I took off on Wednesday, like the bits at the side, and I did a couple of extra rows of sequins. I probably will end up doing more sequins to be honest. Just in like some of the gaps, putting some purple, and I want to put the the seafood ones on the cups. But um, it's all like very little tweaks at this point. From a picture perspective, you probably won't see it well unless you have good lighting, and I do not have good lighting. <laughs> Which is why I was quite happy to take a photo already, because it's like you, you probably won't notice the difference <laughs> from a photo. At least from one of my photos. But I'll, I'll notice the difference. Time to start the day. Heck yeah! If I had snacks, I'd eat them all, so I try not to have too many. That's fair. That's fair. I always like having something to nibble on. Uh, if I'm like, you know, just not not hungry enough for a meal, but like a little hungry. But then I'm pretty good at uh, what do you call it? Like spreading out my snacking, <laughs> so I don't eat too many at once. I'm a, I'm a grazer, to be honest, when it comes to eating anyway, so that makes sense. Like, I could probably eat throughout the entire day, but I'd eat very, very slowly. Okay. And then let's 
two on zigzag. Have you finished over there? All right. Let me put the needle in and then I will switch you around a bit. There you go. So it's like the beginnings of like a little wavy thing. As with most of the embroideries, as I've interpreted what I see on the design, it's close enough. Ah oh dear, yeah, it's like, where's swirly left piece for uh, 42? I just need Fred squ squiggly piece six behind long boy 13. Uh, <laughs> boom is a dress. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically, it was like a, a massive 3D puzzle. But uh, I wrote it in the Instagram post. I don't think I wrote it anywhere else. Without cheating, does anyone have any idea how many, uh, how many embroideries are in this dress? Like, I, I'm not talking about, like, big pieces. I'm talking about, like, like for instance, here, there's two embroideries on this piece. So, like, that kind of way. If you've seen it, don't spoil it. But, uh, yeah, give, give, give a guess. I'll give you all a, a second. But it was more than I had anticipated, that's for sure. And I guess you have to include the woman embroidery that is 30 embroideries in one. <laughs> you had long enough? You had long enough to think about it? So in the dress, there is 124 embroideries. <laughs> and they're like all unique, digitized separately. So we digitized 124 embroideries just for the dress. Yes. It was, it was a huge project. Like digitizing one embroidery takes a while, let alone over a hundred. So yeah, it's it quite quite the project that was. Oh yeah. There you go. Oh. Let's move this around then. So I need not this one. And okay, we need. Which one is next? Um, I think this one. I'm gonna move it up a bit. <coughs> right, that should be good. Right, get it moved into position, and then we can go. It's 99, damn. Yeah, over 100 there was. It was, yeah, I, it felt like a big project. We're not, not gonna lie here. It felt like a big one. But um, I don't know that it felt like, you know, a hundred and, hundred and something. It felt big, but I don't know if it felt that big. Okay, we need to move this up now. Okay. I need this straight, but it's like, it's so difficult to tell where straight is. Oh god. Is it this? Is that straight? Maybe. It looks kind of straight. Oh god. I need to loosen this off a bit, huh? Is that gonna fit? Just about. Oh my god. Ah! I swear. I was like, I'm gonna rest my fingers today because they've had a really hard week. Meanwhile, my hands. Okay. How's that? Is that good? You happy with that? <laughs> I hope so. No, that doesn't look straight at all! Oh god! Okay, move that around and then try that again. Okay. 
Okay. Is that straight? <laughs> okay, let's see. Yes, yes, that's what I wanted. Okay, that's perfect. And just make sure it's all pulled through nice and tight. Otherwise, we're very happy with that. That's good, that's good. Uh, it's actually not a lot of the goldy embroidery on this one. It's only a little bit. So this is only gonna take a couple minutes, but that's okay. Oh God. Oh yeah, I should say, if you guys haven't checked out our mod team, well, first of all, I don't have zero as a shout out on there, but they did just do a 72 hour stream for charity. Um, and Dem is playing right now. So Dem is playing Elden Ring right now. There you go. And Shifty, yesterday, was playing Metal Gear Revengeance. Which is not a real word, but it does sound very cool. I did not realise how defined the butts were in Metal Gear. Which is my mistake, really. They, they are defined buttocks. <laughs> it's very funny. What is it? Right, is that bit? I see, yes, that's all good. straps it's been awful <laughs> it's fine like the petticoat looks great but it's so heavy that it's like oh no i want to get it off immediately it's not comfortable much to do on this one with the, the more yellowy gold. You good? Okay, let me change the thread colour. Next one's 12 minutes, so that'll be a little bit longer. I remember I digitised this one all as one piece, so it kind of goes around a bit weirdly. That's okay, you know what, we, get, we, we let it happen. <laughs> I say we, I let it happen really, but like, oh yeah, it looks alright in the end, it'll be fine. Oh dear. Oh, also, I should be announcing. I, I did put like a proper announcement on social medias, but just so people know, next Thursday is our stream anniversary. We're going to be streaming specifically, we're going to be doing some celebrations, of course. I'm actually planning to start the stream by playing some Animal Crossing because I've got the new expansion. But uh, I want to finish it off with some community games like Marbles. And during the stream, we're going to be talking about the Migraine Trust. Uh, so the Migraine Trust is a charity, it is in the UK, but I would say that because a lot of what they do is online, they're pretty helpful worldwide if you're someone who, who either suffers yourself with migraines or knows someone who's suffering with migraines. Or maybe you're a teacher or a boss and you have an employee that suffers with migraines. Uh, basically, it just gives has lots of helpful information packs you can distribute to those areas. They do a lot of talks in school and stuff like that. They do meetups and gatherings with like like events. I don't know how to describe it because you get a ticket to go. Uh, and they have like lots of people, like doctors who specialize in, in migraine coming to it. I know last time I went to one was before the pandemic, unfortunately, just because of everything happening, right? But they had like pediatric migraine people. They had uh, a few people just who were specialists in the field. Uh, they talked about new medications, things like that, things people can try. Um, a lot of it was standard stuff, but a lot of it was stuff that would be coming over to the UK but wasn't here yet. And as someone at the time who was really struggling 
like mentally with going through migraines. It basically just gives you a lot of hope for the future. Like it gives you a lot of hope that, you know, even if the things aren't working for you now, that maybe something will come along that will work for you. And yeah, they're, they're a fantastic supportive charity because really who they do most of the work for is people with migraine. But yeah, they're very good. I w again, it's been one that I've, I've wanted to do a charity stream for for a very, very long time. But because it's a very personal one for me, um, kind of put off doing it because I thought it would be, well, first of all, like, I don't know, with, with the breast cancer awareness stuff, it's, it's something that means a lot to me because of my job, right? But it doesn't affect me personally in the same way that my dreams do. Um, and it felt a bit selfish to do a charity stream for migraines uh, when it's like that. But I wanted to do it anyway because regardless of whether we raise money or not, it gets the word out of the stuff that they do for other people with migraines. So they're, they're very, very happy. I should really get a nightbot thing set up so that during my streams, uh, especially leading up to next Thursday, I have that popping in. Because I'll forget. <laughs> oh dear. Also, I should say, if anyone wants to see anything in particular on our stream anniversary, just let me know, whether it be when I'm live, or you can post it to me on Discord or something like that. Because at the end of the day, everyone here has made the last two years really, really fun. If there's something that I can do on the last stream anniversary, I'd love to. I just want to have a nice time. Last time on our stream anniversary, we sped ran uh, Final Fantasy. And I can't do that this year. But um, yeah, I just wanted to be a fun day. Oh. I think that was the first speed run we did for Final Fantasy as well, wasn't it? So that was like the one that was nearly 15 hours of just <laughs> me being really slow. Slow to get Excalibur. Oh god. Slow run, a very slow run. But it was fun, I enjoyed it a lot. I would one day like to go back to try to do more speed running when we have a smaller project on the go, maybe. Go. Okay. Nice. Let's, try, let's trim the threads off these two. And then we'll look at making little covers. I don't need it to be covered the whole way because I know the bits underneath, excuse me, underneath where we just added the padding. You won't see those. So I don't, I don't really worry about covering those bits, but I would like to cover these bigger pieces just in case you can see them peeping through at all. I don't think you will, but you know when you're wearing a costume, things move. And if, well, I'd be a bit worried, honestly, if the bus would move that much, but if it does, <laughs> hey, safe. Trim the other one. You're doing okay. Yeah, I remember you, you sewed that up in a bit of a weird order, but that's okay. That's on me, honestly, for digitizing the whole piece at once. <laughs> Rather than doing it in separate pieces. Okay. I knew what I was doing. I was making a mess. There we go. Get all that there. And then get this in here. Right, oh, I can see two more. <laughs> we're not done, we're not done, I can see two more. There you go, that's better. Ah, uh, Pee Pee, welcome on in, I hope you're having a good day. We're just making some straps for my petticoat right now, because my petticoat's really heavy, and I just want to have something like, a little comfortable so that it doesn't put all the weight on my waist where there's a lot of fabric. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. And we're also embroidering some pieces for the headpiece. So yeah, that should be a little bit nicer and comfortable oh, okay how do I want to cover this then <laughs> I can make a little sausage and cover it with that uh, that might be the best way of doing it actually uh, how wide are you you are six centimeters wide and you should be about 20 centimeters long so if I cut out some purple pieces that are double that in width I can make two little sausages and sneak it over the top and then sew those on Makes sense to me. In my brain, that will work. Oh yeah. Okay. So what I 
need, actually I can probably do it on the same piece, right? Move my tea a little bit so that I don't, I mean, get in my tea. But like, if I need a 40 centimeter by just over 20 so I can do a little seam on both sides, that shouldn't be too difficult. Oh no, wait, I don't need a 40 centimeter, but I talk about I need 12 centimeter. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm about to make a huge sausage. No, I need 12 centimeters. And again, a little extra for a seam allowance. So really, I don't need very much. Because yeah, that's, that's loads too much. I don't, I don't need all that. It's just a little sausage. There you go. So if I say, draw on from here, to here and then I do it again like at a guess here and here I should be able to draw 20 centimeters right and then oh that's a lot of damage shoot Thank you for the damage. Appreciate it. That should be a good little sausage I can make out of this. There you go. There you go. Very nice. Oh dear. Jan, welcome on in. Thank you so much for the flex tape. We are making a little sausage that I can put over my strap so that if any of it happens to peek through, it'll look purple. So we can have a little subtle strap for the petticoat. This is kind of like background work because you won't really see the petticoat strap ever, but it is very useful for me to have it. There you go. And then we need to cut a little bit extra for a seam. Let's, uh, let's trim that down. We don't need quite so much on these sides, since I'll be going into each other at the end of the day. Uh, and this side too probably actually can be trimmed down a little bit. Shouldn't really have a seam that's bigger than one centimeter. Probably. one centimeter in since that's the seam allowance we've given it it's gonna be a bit of a squeeze but that's actually okay in this case because I can just sew it onto the bit that we're squeezing it onto and it'll be fine that makes sense perfect sense right <laughs> oh dear potato no I hope you're having a good day welcome on in I do hope your day has been good and your week since we are at the end of the week now nails right now so I can't pick my boot off the desk <laughs> which is a little annoying but there you are that's fine we'll live with it okay so make a little sausage cheese and then make another little sausage tube turn our little 
sausage tubes the other day. What embroidery machine do I have? All of the information for all of the stuff is below the stream. I think it's the Brother SE600. But if you need any information, most of the time it's below the stream. That way, uh, I don't. if I mess it up, past me can correct me because I'm not very good at Like, people be like, so what does your computer have? I don't know. <laughs> what, what, what graphics card do you have? I don't know. <laughs> I have no memory for technology. You got another machine? Is it new or I didn't notice it? It's not new. I've had it for four years. I've had it a while. I've had it longer than this machine. No. Yes. I think. I think I had it longer than this machine because I think I was still using uh, my older brother sewing machine when I got my brother embroidery machine. And then I upgraded my sewing machine. Um, yeah. I, I, I upgraded my sewing machine to the to gnome that I have now. I'm pretty sure. It's, it's because it's so far in the past, I, I just don't remember the order. I know that I've had this one out of warranty and this one's also out of warranty. So they're both at least three years old. <laughs> there you go, information. Both my machines are out of warranty. How's that? I'm pretty sure that was what you were looking for, right? You just wanted to know if my machines were still in warranty? Luckily, it's not too long of a sausage. I forgot there's a bottom of the stream, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I really put it there for my benefit because that way, when people ask, if I get it wrong, don't worry, because I've definitely put it right underneath the stream. Uh, whatever it says underneath the stream, that's correct. Don't trust me, I might be lying. But what it says under the stream, that's the truth. <laughs> I'm just not very good at technology, and I never know when I got things on what half of my things technical names are. It's cool computer, Bob. I don't know. Listen, Bob is Bob. Are you ready? Do you need more? Well, give me two seconds because I'm just threading this sausage. <laughs> so this needs to go. Uh, this side. Oh no, but not. There you go, like that. And then we need to pull it over this strap. And it's gonna be quite tight. That's the idea. And then once that's there, I should be able to just pull it, right? Yeah, there you go. Very nice. <laughs> and then I have a nice solid strap. Uh, I just need to do some pinning at the edges so that we turn those inside out. And then, oh. <laughs> trim all of this off because that's uh not great <laughs> floof oh punisher how goes it and thank you for the luck i hope you're having a good day thank you yes pa well, honestly don't thank me thank past me <laughs> past me had the information present me does not currently have past jelly was a smart bean present jelly not so smart <laughs> present jelly big dumb <laughs> there you go get that in there Get that there. Oh, that's <laughs> almost turned inside out, but not quite. Come on. That's not too difficult. I believe in you. There you go. I'm actually gonna. Do I wanna sew this now or do I wanna set up my embroidery machine? I, mm, the responsible one would be to set up the machine. <laughs> However, what I want to do is sew this. I might I might just sew it quickly. No, I should do the embroidery machine. I should do the embroidery machine. Also, cute. Cute and practical. Basically, when you put that kind of wadding in it and they do that zigzag, it makes it feel like a backpack strap, so it's really strong. To be fair, the amount of times I scroll down on stream is like once in every three months, honestly, same. <laughs> Which is why my information never updates. Oh dear. Uh, Langlock, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. We are making some straps for the petticoat and doing some embroidery. Let's. Just back, back, back. Okay, get the next piece set up. It should be the really small one. This one. I will edit and map embroidery. Okay, that's a good point for it to start, honestly. Also, Ray, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. Was it Lire? Welcome on in. 
Uh, I had one of the worst nights last night, so I'm feeling like pooped currently. I'm gonna have you all in the background to help you get the extra hours in. Oh, bless you. Well, I hope you managed to get some good sleep. Sorry to hear that it wasn't good last night. Honestly, I feel that. Like, a bad night's sleep really does set you up for the day in a bad way. I want to go in there. <laughs> right? Why are you coming in halfway through the OST? That's way too jazzy, Croc. <laughs> Whatever. You can come in halfway, I'll let you. <laughs> oh, dear. I need a great day so far. A little early, but still fine. Oh, but a little early. You have under-exaggerated that. that. That's very... <laughs> Oh dear, you know, I think that only just counts as the morning in Animal Crossing. I think, I think 2am is still kind of like the evening. Or is that something else I'm thinking of? Okay, will you fit? Because this is a lot of embroidery to slip over. I think you're going to struggle a bit here, huh? Let's loosen you off a little bit more. Make sure that comes the whole way out. Uh, this is going to be the hardest one to line up because the fourth one always is because it's like the end of the circle. <laughs> trying to line up the end of the circle, it's a pain. And also trying to get this tucked in is, if you can't tell, also a pain. <laughs> okay, do you need to be loosened a little bit more? Uh, hold that. Oh, that's tightening it, is it? No, that's tightening it. Honestly, you're messing with me. Okay. Mm. Oh, come on. Please. Just fit in. Just tell me that you can fit in. Is it in? Is it in? <laughs> If this is right, that'd be great, but I do have the feeling that there's no way. I've just been like mashing it in. <laughs> like that's not straight, I'm sure. Um, okay, let's let's redo it. I'd mashed it in that time, so let's try. Uh, I think it needs to turn this way a little bit more. Oh, is this folding back over on itself? Yeah, that's not gonna help. Let's, <laughs> let's have less of that, please. But then a bit more straight. Oh my god! Oh, the arm strength! I swear. I swear. No, that's a lot of damage! Oh, it is a lot of damage. It's just very, very strong. Okay. That feels a little bit straighter. I don't know now. If it might not line up there. Also, train work, welcome on in. Oh dear. If it was any earlier, it'd be late previous day. Yeah. Early than normal make time is five. That's still early. That's a little more manageable than three though. Okay, I'm gonna move it there. I don't know if I'm actually moving it more in line, but I think I think the embroidery will be better off for that move. I'm gonna do it. Okay, push it in. Hard push. Come on. Honestly, it sounds like I'm a labor nurse. What do you call it? I can't remember what it's called, but the labor nurses. <laughs> right. Try that one. Ooh, is that a little off at the top? Maybe, but we'll see. If it lines up here, I think it'll be worth that risk. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's fine. It's fine. This is a really hard piece to put in. We'll work with it. Ah, uh, Sai, welcome on in. Also, thank you for the flex tape potato. Good times, good times. You're doing great. Just, uh, just keep doing that. Yep. And then. It's fine. It's fine. Don't think about it, Jen. It's fine. This is a very difficult one to do, and it's doing great. <laughs> okay, let's do this bit, which I wanted to do before. Oh, also, keep going. You're fine. 
doing fine over there. Oh dear, Jelly, I have moved you to my TV, so now, oh god. Jason, I don't know if I'm ready for TV. I, I, I don't think I'm ready. Oh dear. There we go. Also, thanks, Nightbot, very cool. Let's get that there. Right. So now those two edges are sewn up. And now, sew up the straps like this. crosses underneath I don't need to do it at this point it's like it's nice and flat it's flat but it's you know padded like a backpack strap that's the best way I can put it I think is it just feels like a backpack strap but then once it gets to that point you know it's probably gonna be pretty good because you know backpack straps are made to hold things that are heavy and I'm gonna be holding up something that's heavy there we go logic dictates I think that this should work pretty well over here still. There you go. Quite a short one. Nice. Yeah, there's a little gap there. That's okay. We'll... I can fix that in post. It's a teeny tiny gap. And we will live. We will live. The other thing is I'm going to be beating it, so eh, how notice will be. Oh, my camera moved move then. I don't no, it's fine. I just, I'm not sat on the floor like I was all week. Oh, the big TV star now. Hello, television. How goes it? Definitely not ready for it, but hello. So it should look like that. I'll put you on big screen in a second just so you can see, but... There you go. Look at the strap. I'll end up coming down to about here. But, yeah. Now, on the, on the bit of my shoulder where the weight will be, it's just a bit padded. And it's thick, which is nice. Jellivision. <laughs> Jellivision. Oh, God. Uh, let me pin this to the mannequin for a minute. Because I'll have to grab the petticoat to attach these. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm wheezy today. We wheezing. not too bad. I thought it was going to be a lot more further off than that, but honestly, I can fix that with a row of beads. That won't even need alterations. That's fine. I was nervous. Oh, dear. Has anyone got anything nice planned for the weekend, by the way? <laughs> we had such bad... I, I had the day off streaming yesterday, right? So, you know, I was like, having a nice relaxing day. And I was like, maybe I'll go out. Maybe I'll go and do something. Maybe I'll have a nice, you know, relaxing day outside the house. Because to this day, I still find one of the most relaxing things to do is to go to a cafe and just sit there. Like, get as many coffees as I want. Like, get a coffee maybe like once an hour or once every 45, right? But just sit there and do nothing. <laughs> because when I'm sat at home, I can't really do that. I don't know why. I, it's more like a me thing, I think, where it's like, you know, if there is something I could physically pick up and start doing, I'll do it. Like, you know, if there's a bit of embroidery that needs fixing or like some beading to do or even something like that, like I'll start doing something. But if I take myself out of the house and go to a cafe, I find it, I find it a lot more relaxing <laughs> because I can't physically do anything like that. I just have to, have to stop for a minute. And I was thinking to do that yesterday. And then we had a massive hailstorm and I was looking outside and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I don't think I fancy it. As much as it would be nice and relaxing to go to the cafe, uh, I don't think it'd be very relaxing to walk through this hailstorm. <laughs> so I decided not to go. But I think I might be going, or even if we don't go out for dinner today, I think we're having a nice dinner. So that'd be nice. I actually made a curry yesterday 
that I'm semi-proud of. It was too spicy, but that was on me. <laughs> I, I misunderstood some of the sewing, the sewing directions? Yeah, that really would be a bad recipe. Um, no, uh, cooking directions, and I added a little too much chili. But other than that, it tasted pretty good. And we've been trying to make curries like this for the longest time, like <laughs> giving it a go and stuff like that. I feel like we're finally nearly there for like a really good curry recipe. I'm very excited. <laughs> because curry is my favorite takeaway and it'd be really nice if I could make it more in the house a little bit. Okay, let's fold all that in. Same thing as before, really. Isn't that the point of curry? Yeah, but I put in, was it two tablespoons of cayenne pepper or something ridiculous? Um, and the base was already spicy, but I honestly think the cayenne pepper might have been what done it. Because um, as soon as we ate it, we were like, oh! But I think it was meant to be teaspoons, not tablespoons. And that's where I mucked up. It's a simple mistake to make, to be fair. Like, mixing up teaspoons and tablespoons. I also made way too much of the spice mix, but I kept some of it to one side, so I can use it again next time. For the same reason. What type of curry was it? It was a sagalu. So spinach, potato. Because we're kind of going more uh, more down the vegetarian, pescatarian route, uh, more for environmental reasons and ethical, to be quite honest, but like, you know, we're, we're starting to do that. And for me, it's mainly because I just can't digest half of meat anyway. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're, we're doing that. We've been doing that since February, I think, was when we started doing that. So we've had very little meat in the diet. And for the last month, I'd say there's been none, except the fish. I still eat fish. Oh dear, we have to be a little careful with meat because I tend to just randomly drop weight. So <laughs> we don't want to go too far at one side and suddenly have me be like, and now I'm, and now I'm dead, that's it. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so we're being careful, but it'd be nice if we could do it. It's been going well the last couple months, I'd say. <laughs> so you quadrupled the amount of chilli, basically. Um, and the curry base was a medium spice uh, already. So I think it just ended up being like... It was tasty as a thing, but then as soon as the spice started to build up, it was like... But, so that's why I think we're almost there. Like I think the recipe would have been good if I hadn't mucked up the chili ratio. Uh, it would have been good, but you know, that, it's fine. It's fine. We're working it out. We still finished it. We had to eat ice cream afterwards, but we still finished it. <laughs> okay. That is another strap. And also at the same time, the embroidery. Let me trim this and then I'll show you that embroidery. So this is gonna be ones that goes on the helmet. Uh, so really high up on the costume, honestly. Uh, it will need to be beaded and sequined, like everything on this costume does. Uh, but there's only one of these on every side and then a smaller one, which we'll do as well. Uh, so this one is a four piece embroidery, the other one's a two piece. And yeah, it's not too bad, honestly. We've done worse, we've done worse. Let's get all this trimmed. We'll have to run and grab the petticoat. It's again on the other side of the room with everything else. There you go. Get all that off. Wah. So you can kind of see a little bit. I'll show you now. There is where it didn't line up perfectly. But when you bear in mind, I'm going to be going over the whole thing in beads. You won't see that too much. If it was really dramatic, I'd have to manually fix it, but that's actually quite all right. And this is gonna go around one of the heads. So if I get my trusty ruler, this should be about 20 centimeters. No, it's 16. <laughs> oh, oh no, that's fine. It's because I was trying to fit it into a... No, I remember. Do not worry. Jelly's just being silly. Um, it's because I was trying to fit it into the hoops of that size. So basically, this will come down to there. This, there's the middle part, like here. We'll come across to here. And kind of, mm, is that a good circle? I don't know. Is that a good, wait, is that a circle? 
Do I actually know what a circle looks like? That's 20, but is that halfway down? Where's halfway point between this and this? It's like there. And then... Okay, now that one's pretty good. It needs to be a little lower down, so like there. Basically, I'll be drawing a circle around this. It needs to be like around like that. So maybe it'll be a bit smaller than I originally intended because it does need to go across that bit. And then it'll go down, about there, come back up and hit there. And that's gonna be my circle. I'll, I'll work a way of getting that out, but basically that's gonna be on my headpiece. It's not the whole of my headpiece, but it'll be on there. <laughs> yes. Uh, I just found out my time has stopped working, so I was a little late in grabbing dinner from the oven. Oh, is it a little overdone? Oh no. I wonder if I have a circle that big in this room. Oh. This is gonna look really weird. Excuse me. I mean, honestly? That's really not far off what I wanted. Maybe, maybe I just use this? <laughs> Sorry, you can probably see yourself a little bit. Sorry, chat. My bad, I don't, I don't want to make you forced to see yourself constantly, but like, that's actually a really good size for this embroidery. Uh, I might just put that around there. I don't know. Yeah, that fits really well. Uh, maybe I use this, my makeup mirror to, uh, to sort out my embroideries, because that fits really good. It's a bit smaller than I was intending, but it's not that much smaller. It's like what? Yeah, 16, no, 18 centimeters, I think, right? Yeah, 18 centimeters rather than 20. I lose two centimeters. And I think that looks really good. Let's do that. <laughs> Make sure that's really prominent. <laughs> but then the only thing would be that it does have to come in at this point. Heck yeah. Very nice. <laughs> uh, I get to see behind the scenes. Did you see behind the scenes? I can probably show you yourself pretty well. There you are. See that? There you are. You're next to the stars and the moon. <laughs> Whoa. Behind the scenes. Right, let's get this bit cut out. If I'm just going to use the mirror as well, that makes this really easy. Because <laughs> I can just draw around the mirror every time. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, went in a bit there. That's okay. That's okay. Wasn't concentrating enough, clearly. There we go. Oh yeah. This will be my my head disc, like there. <laughs> I think that looks like a pretty good size. It is large, that's for sure. I think that this bit comes from the back, though. Is my thought. Let me have a little look at her. Where does it come from? Yeah, so it's behind it. That's okay. I'll put that behind. Yeah. Oh dear. And... Yeah, I think that's... Oh, I still need to do the bit that goes around the back of her head. I forgot about that. I'll have to draw that at some point. That's okay. Yeah, that should be a pretty good side whirly thingy. <laughs> Grob it, welcome on in. <laughs> ah, do you too? Right, let's pin this on the mannequin so it's out of the way. And then I can look at doing another piece, right? I think. There you go, get that on there. So we have one up there. We need more, we need more. So I was cutting from, I think, here earlier. Was I not? Also, thank you for the horns, eh? Um, I think this is where I was from earlier. So I'll just cut a few more pieces from here. They do have to be a little larger than regular pieces, but I don't think they need that big. Like, here should be fine. And I need a few of them. So I might, it might go across a bit. Because we need one for, for both sides, and then, so we need four in total. Yeah, that makes sense. Four. I don't think I need to go the whole way across, but like for instance, if I do, they're all meant to be square-ish, so if I just cut across here, 
that could be square-ish one. <laughs> and then this could be square-ish two. And then we need one more square-ish, please. There we go. That can be square-ish three. Very nice. Very good. And then I need some curtain fabric, but I keep misplacing it. I don't know if it's lower in here than. It... Oh yeah, there it is. Because <laughs> I'm mainly using the the purple one now. Oh yeah. We need this. <laughs> this one's cut all over the place. I don't. <laughs> We'll just get pieces out and hope they're about the right shape, I think, for the most part. I'm not going to bother too much worrying about this since you won't see it and it is just a little bit of extra support. The other thing is, in this particular case, I'm not using dissolvable fabric because it's not necessary. It's not necessary for this bit, which is a nice change for us. Because so far we've had it that basically every piece needs dissolvable fabric. One, two. Horn. And then one more. Let's just cut that out of here. Another square-ish piece. <laughs> I don't think any of them are actually squares. I think they're all rectangles, but that's okay. I had squares in mind. Oh yeah. Put that in there. And start setting the next piece up. Put it in like that. And we're gonna have to tighten this a bit because it's gonna be kind of loose, I think. All right, uh, we'll go over to this side. Oh, actually, no, we'll go in the middle because I'd assume we're gonna want it like here, right? Yeah, so let's put it in the middle. Let's put it in the middle. Be safe, in the middle. And put that in. And yep, that goes in really easily. We need to tighten that up a bit. <laughs> there you go. First one always goes in easily. Gets rubbish after that. There you go. Get that nice and flat. And we will need to change the thread also since there's a lot of the lighter gold on this piece. I think if memory serves, this is a really long embroidery. I think both the gold and the bronze take a really long time. I think it's like 21 minutes with the bronze. <laughs> I wonder what was the first fan made video game cosplay? I remember watching like somewhat of a documentary on cosplay and they were talking about the first convention where people went and dressed up. And I think, was it a Star Trek convention? Maybe? And like they documented a lot of people dressing up at it and so that's where the term cosplay kind of came from even though of course it means costume play i think that's what people were saying it for the first time but i don't know because people have been dressing up as other people for like a very long time but it's not necessarily been cosplay whereas i think that's where that really started it could be wrong though there could have been a time before that it'd be difficult to say exactly Pretty sure it was that Star Trek convention. Oh yeah. I mean, now it's very different to when cosplay originated, right? Because there's a whole community for it, and like it's a it's a very much a growing community. Uh, they grow onto different platforms. They share their art in different ways. It's very different to when when I think a lot of people these days started cosplay. It was a very small thing, like a. Uh, People didn't really, <laughs> you wouldn't say that you, well to be fair, I think in a lot of places you still wouldn't say that you're a cosplayer, right? But like, the idea that you could ever be a cosplayer as a job was like, no. Um, and most people, were, it was very much like a, a time of sharing, a lot, a lot of sharing, and it still is in the cosplay community, but it was like forums and stuff like that, so it was very like, easy to share and someone would use new material and show what it looked like, somebody else would give that a go too, and it was that kind of era. But very different to, to what it is now, in that it's a lot more accessible for people, but it, I guess 
because there's a lot more materials being used, it's more and less accessible, right? Because it used to be... Oh, it's difficult to explain, really. Because now cosplay, there's a lot of stakes in it for a lot of people, right? Where people are trying to make their career off cosplay, whether it be on uh, Twitter or Instagram or TikTok or OnlyFans. But people are, people are trying to make their career off it. So it's much higher stakes for a lot of people, I suppose, than it used to be. Like, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing either, to be honest, but, uh... I think, I think it's cool that people can make this particular hobby their job. But I know, I know it's a very split topic in that some people are very for it and they think that's fantastic, and some people are quite against it. Um... I guess because there's a couple main ways that you can make cosplay your job. Uh, one is just to become like a, re a famous cosplayer, like people like watching your stuff. I think TikTok's a really good example of that at the moment, where they won't necessarily show the making process of the cosplay, but they'll maybe show getting into the cosplay or they do dances in cosplay. And so a lot of people get popular off that side. Do they always make the costumes? No, some do, some don't. But a lot of the people on TikTok do not, or they commission other people. Um, which, again, I don't think there's anything wrong with. Whereas, maybe, like, the more... Where it originated in forums, everyone was making their own costumes. Because you couldn't go out and buy an anime costume. Like, there was, there was no way you were going to watch the anime out this season and be able to buy a costume for it. You'd have to make it. So everyone would be sharing details of how they made their costume from so-and-so show. And that way other people would do that too. But that's because... It, I guess cosplay originates with basically everybody making their costume. Uh, but now because it's a much bigger hobby, bigger, more mainstream hobby, uh, there's a lot more resources for people that they don't have to make their own costumes. And there's people that will take commissions for costumes as well if you want a made costume that isn't one that you have to make. So it's diversified a lot. Which again, I don't think is a bad thing. I think it was going to hit the mainstream. This was always going to have to happen. Uh, but I think it does leave people feeling quite uh, torn because, of course, the maybe the origins were more making focused and community focused when it came to that. Whereas now, that's still part of the community, but that's it, isn't it? It's part of the community. It's not the whole community. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. It's quite a a discussed topic in the cosplay community. Yes. Yeah. Right, get that outline done and then it's 11 minutes on the yellow so I'm going to go grab my petticoat from the other side of the room so that I can start attaching the straps to it two seconds, oh does my chair not turn anymore please, please let my chair turn I need to get out <laughs> two seconds, uh, it's literally just the other side of the room but it's kind of heavy so it'll take me a minute pin this while it's on so I'm gonna be just like off to one side popping it on over the top of my jumper and leggings just to make sure that I've got the straps pinned in the right place actually let's pin them on the back quickly so that I can flop them over to the front and decide where I want them otherwise it's gonna be such a pain trying to work out where they sit and yeah I just nah so let's say I put this one in just here, and then, is that the way I want it? Yeah, that's the way around I want it. And then put this one just here. And be honest, as long as the straps don't show, I don't really care too much. Right, let's quickly pop this on. Oh, sorry, I might have just... Apologies, guys, I think I just shook you around a bit. There you go, okay, you can go... Uh, there. there we go. Make sure you're staying up there. And then... Let's get a little bit. So 
in my massive petticoat and get that to about there I think I might be a bit too far in honestly I really don't want them to show or warp the shape underneath the dress as well that would be a pain um, the thing is I haven't pulled it tight so that might not be very accurate mightn't it where's the where's all of the stuff where I pull it in there you go Then we have a lot of time because this embroidery takes a minute. And then where's my thing tied up? There it is. Okay. Let's tie it up quickly. Pretend like it's uh, it's pretty tight. Because I'll probably have it on as physically tight as I can get it. Since it has to go underneath the dress and underneath the tail corset. Which is rough, but let's get that there. <gasps> Your dog tricked you? He was already finished his dinner, but he was looking at me while eating dinner, so he guilt tripped me to give him the love. <gasps> wow. Wow. Oh, but I, I bet he was very happy about it, though. I oh, didn't even touch. He didn't even touch his dinner? Oh, okay. That's a bit cheeky then. It's a little cheeky. have this about here. Okay, this is gonna look a bit silly, but bear with me. There you go. That is about right, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it looks really silly with my jumper, but that's okay. <laughs> right, let's undo the back. doing that 5 p.m. from the other side of the world gone welcome on in I hope you're having a good day oh, I am doing some petticoat work just just like kind of background work but like that will make the dress a lot more comfortable overall or I guess not just the dress the whole costume should become a lot more comfortable so we're doing that right now having to repin these bits because honestly <laughs> this is a thing like when they're not sewn they're just <laughs> they're something that's for sure okay what color thread maybe the white thread I, not that it really matters you won't see this but the white thread go on we'll use that yeah, on april 30th twitch on desktop is no more i just got the heads up what is do, some, do you mind explain to me what twitch on desktop is because I don't think I quite understand what that means. Like, you can't watch Twitch on computers anymore? Ah, oh dear. So, like... Because that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Surely a lot of people do watch... do watch Twitch on their computers. But maybe I'm misunderstanding. Normally when Twitch makes changes, I can kind of see where they're coming from, but I don't understand why, uh, why, why they'd remove it off desktop. And maybe, again, it could just be me being a, being a grandma, not understanding all these newfangled things. If that's the case, I apologize. <laughs> why are you being silly? It's still Twitch on my PC. I think Twitch just wants us to watch with pro- Oh! Okay, okay. So you can still watch it on PCs, you just have to watch it through the internet. 
like your Internet Explorer or your Chrome or your, your Firefox or something like that. If that's the case, that's okay. <laughs> because that's how I watch Twitch. My mobile phone cannot handle Twitch. And I'd be a little sad if I had to, to stop watching everyone because they weren't on my desktop. <laughs> Dear. Okay, no, I'm glad, I'm glad. That makes all sense. Twitch on desktop is an application which does Twitch streams and you can play free games on the app as well. You know what? You know what? I think I actually had Twitch on desktop years and years ago, like well before I even thought I was going to start streaming. Because, oh, what was the reason I got it? They, they, I, I norm, never normally download something like that. But there was some reason I did this time. Oh, I can't, I can't remember it for the life of me. If it comes back to me, I'll let you know. But yeah, I think I actually did download it. Not, not on this PC and not on Bob either. We're talking like pre-Bob computer. I, I downloaded it on that. Oh no, maybe it was Bob. Was it Bob? No, it can't have been because my desktop passed across. I don't think it was Bob. I think it was the one before Bob. Which was actually Bob, really, because the Bob that you met was Bob 2.0 and now I'm on Bob 3.0, but like, that's fine, don't worry about it. Ah, oh, so I can still watch with the Twitch application? Oh dear. Fine, maybe I'm like under your feet, kind of. So world is a cube. Oh yeah, world is absolutely a cube. Definitely, definitely. The cube world theory, I subscribe to that. So yeah, we can still if we can still watch on Chrome, if we can still watch on stuff like that, then I, I don't mind at all. Like, that's fine by me. That's all I want. I just want to be able to watch Twitch, Twitch streams on my computer. As long as there's still a way to do that, that's fine. There we go. Take that pin out and then I'm just caught underneath this petticoat. I'm like I can't I can't lean back because. Oh. My petticoat is on my headphone cord. Okay. I should really change screen for doing this, but I don't think you will be able to see what I'm doing on any screen. So I'll, just, I'll stay here for now. If you guys want, I can change the face cam, but then you won't be able to see the embroidery machine doing its fantastic work over there. It might be a shame, it's working so hard. Oh dear. Jelly, how's your day? Good to hear crackers today? I've got, um, what do you call them? I have got shortcake, raisin shortcake biscuits and biscuit tea, so the tea already smells like biscuits. I've got overboard on biscuits this morning, but I wanted caffeine, but I wanted the, uh, the biscuit caffeine. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And get that the whole way through there. Honestly, I've been meaning to put straps into this petticoat for so long. Pretty much since I finished it, which was back in November. And I just haven't. So it's really quite therapeutic to get this done. <laughs> After all this time. It, feel, it feels good. It feels like I've, uh, I, I accomplished something today. It's just because it's kind of a boring job. <laughs> and like, I like to focus on all the really like sparkly and exciting jobs more. But, you know, this still needed to get done. It's still an important one, even if it's not very interesting to me. Do you, are you okay? Yeah, you're fine. You've got a little bit more to do, don't you? Uh, okay, let's trim this one. And go to the other side. Starting down the Twitch desktop app due to the lack of users. Actually using the apps so they're delivering the funds to other projects. I think that makes a lot of sense, honestly. I can't imagine too many people were using it. What I do remember is it used to load on startup on one of my computers. That's why I remember that I had it. Uh, I don't think it was Bob because I think I'd remember if it was Bob. I'm pretty sure it's the one before that. But yeah, I used to, whenever my, my laptop would start up, it would start up Twitch at the same time. But because at the time, I probably only watched like two or three streamers, right? So I, I really didn't need it. <laughs> I didn't need it starting like that because it didn't, it didn't help me very much. Like if I'd go, I'd still go to Chrome if I wanted to watch them, you know? Oh, are you ready to have your thread changed? Two seconds, let me get some starting stitching in this and then I'll change your thread. Do not worry, we shall do that in just a second. I just want to get a couple stitches in here so that I don't 
My thread doesn't go all over the place. Oh, yeah. Makes absolute sense, yeah. But people are complaining of the shutdown due to lack of much... Uh, due to the lack of much lag on the desktop ad. Oh, that's quite good, to be fair. Um, I would say that I have pretty good internet here, but I still get lag on some people's streams. Uh, so if it, it took that away, that'd be nice. And like, whenever I get lag, I tend to refresh the stream just so that I'm not behind the rest of chat then if they didn't get that same lag spike. So it would save me doing that and having to refresh my stream all the time. I say all the time, it's not that often, honestly. I'm being dramatic, it doesn't happen very often. But when it does happen, that's kind of cool. The thing is though, people will always find a reason to complain, won't they? And maybe Twitch will start allocating those funds so that the regular desktop is uh, less laggy for users. Hmm. That'd be true about the Minecraft. Yeah, we in a, we're in a square world. You can't convince me otherwise. The world is square. And this is a really awkward place to thread the machine up. But also, I know that once I do, this is a 21 minute embroidery. So I'll have plenty of time to get these straps sewed in. I should have worn a smaller top today, like a, a closer to the skin one, so I could actually try this thing on. Because over the top of my uh, jumper, it looks ridiculous. I should have thought ahead and worn like a tank top or something. I swear I do this every time, like, when I'm going to try costumes on, I'm always wearing the most ridiculous, like, like big jumper. So, like, it, do it, <laughs> it doesn't give an accurate fit at all. that in there. Reach across. So I can thread the bobbin. There you go. And put this all back in again. Make sure it's not folded over. Come on. Sorry, doing it from this angle is very awkward. But it's necessary because I'm doing stuff with the petticoat. Two seconds. Needle problems. Do I have to grab it from this side? There you go, that's better. We got it. Needle problem solved. I swear, I knew you were gonna do that. You're like, the one time you can't bloody move, I'm gonna make you re-thread the needle. Fine, have it your way. I'll re-thread the needle. Oh. Just realized that if or when I live alone, I won't be using so much power because I've been home alone since Thursday morning and the only thing's on for a while is the fridge, my computer, modem and lights when I'm out of my room and the TV when I'm prepping or eating dinner. Yeah, I mean, you do and you don't, right? The more people that live in the house, the more power you're naturally gonna use. But, uh, I don't know, it doesn't normally become that dramatic. The computer, you probably find, <laughs> takes up a lot. <laughs> and leaving lights on, if you leave lights on, when they don't need to be left on, that uses a lot of power. Yeah. The fridges and stuff don't use very much. Unless you have like a very inefficient fridge. <laughs> okay, what are you doing? You're ridiculously long. Unnecessary. Right. I've re-threaded everything. So at this point, you shouldn't really be getting mad. Because I re-threaded everything. Honestly, I don't want to see you being grumpy here. I did my job. That back in there. You happy now? Okay. Good. <laughs> right, bring that on the I think the 
this is why I need to be sewing. There we go, yeah. Glad I did a few stitches ahead of time, because <laughs> they would have come straight out. Oh. Also, is it just me, or is everyone's name in chat red? Maybe I'm just... Maybe I just can't tell the difference. Looks like you're red today. Uh, I kind of like it when that happens, though. When the people in chat just happen to have the same colour name, and then we have, like, five pink people. Or five blue people. It's very funny. Oh, dear. Go. Just keep stitching through. And then... Oh. oh, yeah. Jason is the only red one I can see. Oh, I also see Tisa as red. Tisa is also a little red bean today. Fuck it, I had that yesterday. All my chat was uh, very shades of purple. I find it hard to keep track when that happens. Yeah, it does make it a little bit more difficult if everyone's the same colour, but I also kind of love it. Like, it's very funny, but it's much easier to miss messages because uh, you'll think you've read it because you've read the one from the purple name, but then everyone has the purple name. So maybe, yeah. It does make it easier to miss messages, but it's also very funny just to have, like, a wall of red. <laughs> I like that. I'm teal on my own screen. Oh! Well, that's weird. For me, you're like the same red as Jason. Do you have it that you haven't got a set color, Tisa, so it changes every day? Because if so, that might be why I see you as uh, red, but of course you see yourself as teal. Tisa's red for me too. Nah, that's why then. Tisa's a dark egg color for me. Oh, this is probably because Tisa hasn't set a color, so Tisa will be rainbow for everyone. Different colours all around. That's kind of fun, though. I like that. I like that. Oh, dear. I have to make sure not to accidentally put my petticoat onto the machine. That'd be a bit embarrassing. There we go. Oh, yeah. How do I set a colour? I don't even know how. It should be... Oh, there's something you can click. Is it your own name? Let me let me see. If I put something in chat, like this. There you go. Now I click my own name. Uh, edit chat identity. Uh, yeah, so click your own name. Uh, click edit chat identity. And then if you scroll down at the bottom, you've got like loads of colors you can pick from. Oh dear. put in like I think a natural number sometimes but yeah <laughs> jelly is right I am double no you're fine board game or type slash color or that oh dear to be fair I had to I had to <laughs> I had to post in chat just to double check because it's been a while. I don't change my colour very quick, like often. I was like pink for a year and a half and I've recently become blue. <laughs> but I don't change that often. Uh, where's my scissors? Under the skirt somewhere maybe? Yeah. There they are. Again, fortunately, I know this bit goes on on the embroidery machine for a while, so I don't have to be too present. I can, I can do other things. Also, yo, listen up. Here's a story about a little guy that lives in a blue world And all day and all night and everything he sees is just blue Like him inside and outside Blue his house with a blue little window and a blue corvette And everything is blue for him and himself and everybody around Cause he ain't got nobody to listen to I'm blue, dabba dee dabba die, dabba dee dabba die, dabba dee dabba die, dabba dee dabba die, dabba dee die, dabba dee dabba die, dabba dee dabba die. I'm blue, dabba dee dabba die, 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 dabba dee dabba die. Yeah. 
Thank you, purple. Welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. You said the match, but I did. I said blue. Uh, is there an opt to be no default color like now? Yeah, just don't click a color. As long as you don't click a color, you're a main default. Yeah. And then you get to be rainbow. Saving it for a full hydrate stream. What, like, if I'm not gonna take the time off the hydrate, I swear, Grobbit. Why would I take the time off the hydrate? I'll just be drinking until I have to pee. <laughs> what kind of stream is that? Huh? Oh dear. Ah. Uh. Ah, oh dear. Well, I can a boy do while I watch. Oh, bless you. You're off for a few days from work? Heck yeah. I hope you enjoy your days off. It sounds like you've got some nice plans with your embroidery. I was saying, I don't know, Tisa. I'm sure there is, to be honest, because a lot of people pick default. Unfortunately, you're probably looking at the screen and I'm not. I'm sure if you Google it, there's a way to do it, though. I know how to set your colour. I'm not sure how to unset colour completely. small stitches i hope it doesn't negatively impact the strength of this so i've gone the whole way around but these are quite like they only just nick the, the fabric but i also don't want to go really far and go all the way through i'm wondering how long it'll take for jelly to drink over 280 drinks is that enough tea jelly i think i'll drown you can drown from drinking too much right i think i just <laughs> like streamer drowns himself live on stream that's what that would be, which I'm pretty sure is against terms of service. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to do things like that for reasonably obvious reasons. There we go. And... Oh, la 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 la. Oh, la la la. There you go. Blues and parties would be great to upload to the Twitch Clips Reddit page. Would be a great upload to the Twitch Clips Reddit page, yeah, like live stream fails. Girl dies from drinking too much tea. Big live stream fail. Oh, if you drown yourself to death on stream, Twitch will send you a warning. If you get three warnings about drowning, they suspect. <laughs> That's true, actually. I could drown myself live on stream, but like, who's gonna, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I'm already drowning. Also, Susanna, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. I'm just sewing in some straps for my petticoat because my petticoat's quite hefty. And uh, I just want a little bit of extra strap support, you know? Oh dear, I said I wasn't going to do any more hand stitching today. I was just going to, I was going to be good and I was going to give my hands a break. But here we are, still hand stitching. Not stopped just yet. That's okay, I shouldn't be doing too much today. Ow! I've pinned this backwards because I feel it. I feel the pin. Ow! That's okay, it's okay. We'll get past this bit quickly and then I won't have to have my hand precariously close to the pin. Oh dear. It gets views at least true, but I'm not sure if that's that's what I want. Oh dear. So can we rerun the drowning? Not really. 
Oh dear. Congrats on the dress being done, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I should say to anyone who's not seen the finished dress or wasn't here on the uh, Wednesday stream where we finished putting all the embroidery together, I posted a picture of it on Instagram, on Twitter, and on the Discord. So there are places where you can go see it if you want to go see it. Because <laughs> I probably won't have it in any of the streams for a little while, unless I wear it on my anniversary stream, which I'm considering because it'd be a nice way for people who have missed parts of the costume to see it all together. Not that I think you'll see the assless chaps, but you know, they'll be there. They'll be there, so the spirit of the assless chaps will be with us. There you go. Turn up to the other side, get that pin out. Ah, <clears throat> you're gonna witness a stream of drowning tea. I am not gonna drown myself in tea, Jason, I swear. Because not only would it get me banned, it would also get me dead. That's not good. <laughs> there we go. Ah, oh, right. I just need to... You know, I've got just the right amount of thread for all four. Which is a nice happy accident. I'll take that. There we go. And... see this can you see all the little red dots or not really i wonder if maybe you can't i've got all these little like red dots on my hand from where i put the pin into it <laughs> on wednesday and it's just it's just not really healing they're just like this is like they look like little uh it looks like i have chicken pox but only on my hands <laughs> oh dear yeah, these tiny little red dots Get that back into here. It doesn't hurt or anything, I should say. It just looks a bit weird. Oh, outie, yeah, and that's fine. It, it doesn't hurt. Like, it, it just looks funky. Right. We should have now a costume with straps. Oh my god. I've been waiting. I have been waiting for this. Uh, shall I pop it on quickly? Just make sure it fits. That'd be, that'd be the sensible thing to do. Aban, welcome on in. Courtly, how goes it, Aban? I hope you're having a good day. Welcome, welcome. I'm just going to be trying on the petticoat quickly. I'll, I'll be back. I'm just going to be just here. Because I need somewhere reasonably large to stand when I try this on because it's big. Let's see how comfortable it is now. Now that we've added big, thick straps onto it. It should be a lot more comfortable, honestly. And that'd be nice to have this without pins in it because when I was like trying to work out what I needed for the straps, I always had pins in it. Welcome to my stream. <laughs> I am dressed uh, like a like a five-year-old dressed themselves, but that's okay. There we go. Uh, a productive day, I guess. I'm glad. I hope so. You know, parents right, they can't see you do nothing, so they had me do stuff for them, like jumping the car, changing car batteries. Jesus Christ, that is quite a lot. <laughs> oh God, Gucci work was fine. I'm glad. I'm glad. Everything else is okay. That's quite a bit. Oh dear. Yeah, actually, this is really comfortable now. My God. Now, so now when I try the dress on over the top of it, but that, I don't need to do that. I don't need to try the dress on over the top. I could put the other petticoat on over the top. What do I want to work on next? Honestly, I thought it would take longer to do this. I, I've been putting it off so long, it felt like it'd take a really long time, but actually, it's pretty good, pretty comfy. <laughs> oh, it sounds like a machine gun. You mean that? Or, or the uh, stuff you've been doing? It is. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is just my machine gun. It's uh, it's making my costume for me. You wouldn't think a gun could make a cosplay, but you'd be wrong. It absolutely can. We've already done one of them. 
Uh, so we're making these at the moment. Uh, these are going to be on my headpiece. So they're going to be like, if I go into face cam, I'll show you. Because this one goes on this side. So it'd be like that. Can you see it? I think so. But it's going to be like a big disc. And we're going to have hair things coming out of it. They're not hair. They look like a... Which one have I got? The sanded one. Great. <laughs> I love like this coming out of it. <laughs> It looks a bit weird, but it looks weird in the costume too, I swear. I'm not just adding random stuff. Exactly. Oh, so yeah. We're doing those. I don't... I, I need to find something else to sew, because otherwise I have nothing to do with my hands. I just sit here like you. Cosplay, eh? Nice. Uh, I could... Mm, do I have the stuff for that? It's time for bed? Yeah, I could just, I, I could also go to bed. <laughs> I mean, it's like not even midday here, but you know, bedtime maybe. It's gonna look great. Thank you, Aban. Oh, at least we're tied to the bedroom. That's fair. Oh, dear. I, I, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with it so far. The costume as a whole, and I, I love it. Like, look at all my cute, my cute, my cuter gold layers. <laughs> I love it. But, um,. What can I do? Uh, I wonder if I could start to pattern the back wings. Might be a bit risky. That's what I, I need a large amount of space for that. But I could. Would you guys be up for that? Just a little bit of pattern work? Uh, I might have to move this a little bit so you won't see it quite so much. It'll be more like that. But I need to pattern my back wings. What to do? Just relax and drink tea? <laughs> I can't, I can't, I don't know. Um, I don't think I'd be very good in the just chatting category for this exact reason. I love to talk, but I also like to have something to do with my hands. And if I have nothing to do with my hands, I'm just like, what, 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 what do I do? I've got nothing to do with my hands. Um, so I always feel a bit lost. Oh, also, I didn't take a picture of this because at the time I was just a bit devastated. I spilt this entire pot of beads uh yesterday half of it which ends up on the desk which was not too difficult to pick up but the other half that ended up in my carpet <laughs> my carpet which i then had to pick all of my beads out of oh my god i, w I literally was doing such little beading as well I was like i just want to do a little bit here and a little bit here all my beads on the floor <laughs> it was it was bound to happen at some point doing this costume god i was devastated when it happened uh, let's do some pattern work then. Um, you can kind of still see it going at the side. You can definitely still hear it. Oh. <laughs> until, I, until I get to drink. Why Why can you not drink now, Aban? No, if you're thirsty, you should drink. You don't want to get dehydrated. Beating sounds nasty. It's not. It's, it's good. It's good. It's just all over the floor. It's not good. Discharging brings in interesting people. I've heard that from people. Uh, let me just refread this bobbin quickly. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> my massive skirt. <laughs> I just, uh, let me just do that. Um, yeah, I've, he I've heard it brings in uh, more of a diverse crowd of people, to put it lightly. Um, I also don't often do content that would fit well into just chatting, because most of mine is craft content. Indeed. Like me. Yeah, like Aban. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair though, we have met some really cool people when we have been in just chatting for those unusual streams. Oh yeah. Whenever I go into the just chatting category, we tend to get more people saying things that they didn't realise people drafted on Twitch. Which is fair, because it's not exactly, uh, I guess outside of the TwitchCon stuff, it's not really advertised on Twitch that people make things. But uh, yeah. That's always kind of cool. I always like that. Oh. oh, don't you dare. For not having a bobbin fall down the back today. Oh, no, 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 no. Watching you. Oh, there it goes. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. Okay, and then we hold this here in case the bobbin goes funky. Eating the tutu, it is kind of like a tutu. It's very big, very poofy. I am stuck to my. I've got a bulky jumper and now, bulky tutu, and then little leggings. I look like a ballerina plumber. <laughs> I feel like a ballerina plumber. Like a. 
Like Mario, the opera. Ma Mario, the ballet. That'd be something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got you. <laughs> you're, not, you're not catching me out with that again. I'm, t I'm wise to your games now. Uh, let's see. So we need to... Undo it till that point, and then I don't like hand wiring my bobbins because it can muck with the tension. But I will not waste all of this thread. There we go. And put that in there. Excuse me. And do that there. Pull that out of there. Oh, that was probably one of the speediest I've ever caught it. Heck yeah. And... Very good. And... In there, there you go. Good refresh. You'll nearly finish this bit. I wonder if I should hold off. Uh, oh, oh! oh there you go. I think I can do some patterning for a bit. Ah, oh dear. I've never tried cosplay seems fun. I watch anime a lot and there's a new anime about cosplay making costumes. Was that uh, my dress up darling? <laughs> I, I've heard a lot of people talk about it really, really highly. I have watched it the whole way through. And there are a lot of parts in it where I'm like, that's exactly the feeling that I get with cosplay. Like, that's exactly how I feel when I see my finished costumes. Or when I'm approaching a costume that's less designed, I approach it exactly the same way. So it did feel super, super relatable uh, as another cosplayer as well for most of it. And yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad it got some, uh, some, some watches. I think it was one of the most popular of the season, right? Right. Where is my... because of my skirt. Let me pull that out. Oh, there's one. Got it. Big mess behind me now, but we'll pretend that's not there. <laughs> I just needed some paper. Um, so the size of the wings, I am thinking probably not too much bigger than this. Hi, oh, Jean. You want to give me a little favour? And just... <laughs> I don't want to go too much longer than, I think, this. That's quite big, see? And... Since my wings are probably going to be mainly horizontal, that might actually be okay. Even that out a bit. There you go. Better. Hmm. Yeah, we could probably start about there. How big is this? <laughs> this is why well, I need a meter rule or something, right? Uh, this is. Which about there would be about 60 centimeters. That sounds pretty good, honestly. I'm actually quite happy with that. I don't think I would want to go much further than 60 centimeters. So, again, especially since my wings are predominantly horizontal, I think it will become a pain very quickly. So let's just do like a couple dots like up here. Like, let's not go further than this sort of bit. There you go. Um, let's have a little look at the wings, shall we? I should die occasionally and you could be a cool of duty streamer with your machine gun. Just shout die. Oh, just shout die. I was like, I went as I should die and I was like, I should see her. <laughs> I should see her none of that. Oh my God, no, you should shout die and then it would be like a machine gun. You are right. You're very right. About two feet, probably. I, I don't know what the conversion of 60 centimeters is. Whatever 60 centimeters is. So I probably want them to go up to start with. Because, bear in mind, there's going to be a pipe going the whole way through this. And then... 
It is two feet. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I have no idea about feet. Um, and then this, if we're designing this one at the top, say. It has to go up kind of high, actually. Maybe I should design the one at the bottom first. Since they both probably go out about the same amount. Because I might need to do the other one straight up. Hmm. Now oh, that's tricky, that is. Thing is, should I go a little longer? I don't think I really want to go longer than that. I think technically maybe it is, but I think that's pretty, pretty far already. I don't want to die. No. I don't want you to die either. I see her. When I thought that's what you said, I was like, no, I see her. Um, so with this one, it curves a little bit, and then it'll go. Yeah, like straight out. Okay, well that's quite nice and easy to see, honestly. Uh, what I'll do then is, we'll do vaguely. It still has to go a little straight to start with, because it will need something to slot into. I do one like this, and then have it just come all the way out. That's a bit further than two feet, but that's okay. I think that's a pretty good arc. That could, like some bits, let me just get a point so I can show you this. Some bits, like I'd say a lot of this, honestly. Um, I will want some structure under here to build the wing up a bit, but all these extra bits coming off it, will do those in fabric. So I don't really need to plan for those. Same with like this gold bit here, but the bit under here, I think I would like to have that built in. So I think, is there a way to draw on stream? Is there a way to like do a drawing? Uh, color source? Oh. No, not that, not that. Uh, sorry, I've just made my whole stream white. I'm so sorry, two seconds. Stream would be noob. Um. Is it, that's not it then. Uh, I don't think there is a way I can doodle on stream. That's okay. LARP, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. We're making wings. <laughs> Flashback, I'm so sorry. I just wanted to draw around a little bit like, cause like I'd keep this in there, but then the rest of this, I'd have more like a, it's a bit of a weird shape because all these extra parts come off it, but I'm working on those. I'm going to work on those separately, probably. So they look like they're flying off it a bit more. And same with this bit here. This is just scales, which we've done before on this channel now. So it's not, it's not like I need to have the pipe or the foam around, if that makes sense. This one will need a bit more probably, but that's okay. Um, let's just, it's going to look really weird. It's my only thing is like, get the pipe there. And then bend it around here but then after this because we'll have the scales coming out here it actually probably needs to be longer doesn't it oh that's okay that's okay probably need it down to about here yeah that's all right and then kicking back at the end of the day doing gm prep oh uh, gonna go into the workshop tomorrow and do some work on some cosplay pops. Heck yeah! So do you actually do LARP? I called you LARP, but do you actually do, you actually do LARP? That'd be pretty cool. I want... Oh, I don't know whether I should do that just as embroidery. Mm, yeah, let's do that as an embroidery. Because I think it will look better. Because I can also see, for instance, like... Uh, Where's my point? There it is. I can see some layer. Ooh, not the right one. I can see some layering here where it looks like they go over in several layers and each layer is tipped with embroidery. Now we're used to that. We did that on the skirt like a few days ago. This is a little bit more difficult, but it's not too bad, honestly. Uh, it's, it's manageable. Uh, this will be very easy. This bit I think to do as a separate embroidery. 
and have it then would I want it to be on the side? It's like, maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Okay, we'll have this bit stick out, come back in, and then stick out a little bit for this bit so that these pieces have something to grab onto. It's a really weird designing process because I'm not using foam. I'm like trying to specifically stay away from uh, doing more traditional armor styles. Um, it means that this gets quite difficult because this is one of the bits where it would probably be easier to do it in foam if i'm being honest <laughs> but because because of like my specific goals with this costume that's not really something that i'm looking to do so i want it to be out a little further down here that still gives me space for that and then i want this the whole way there because then what we'll have is our scales coming out here which we've done before, but there you go. Now you can see some scales. And then, which was the other bit? There were two lines of scales. I thought there were. So then we'd have our, our little extra scale come out there. Again, we've done scales before, so that's not too bad. Then, <laughs> I had to keep flipping it on and off again. Um, oh, but then do we have enough space to come out with all of those extra bits? I'd have to maybe do the scales a bit smaller, but that's okay. Because then we can have that bit there. And then this bit here, which would really have nothing underneath it. And that bit at the end. It's quite intense, but I think that would be okay. Oh dear. Try snip and sketch on Windows if you use Windows. I do. But then I'd have to capture it, wouldn't I? It's a bit difficult for me to capture things right now because I've only got one screen in use. Oh dear. Yeah, I LARP and I've been toying and getting into cosplay. Heck yeah, I have a lot more experience with props than what us LARPers call soft kit. I have a lot more experience with soft. <laughs> I like soft. Everything I make is soft. But I do, I, I've never done LARP, but I've played a lot of D&D and I've always kind of wanted to give LARP a go. Especially since uh, the pandemic started, I've talked to a lot more people that do LARP. And it sounds really heckin' fun. It sounds very heckin' fun. All right, let's cut this off quickly. So I can maybe, <laughs> this is gonna be a big wing, but then it always was gonna be. And it's still not super difficult, even with it being larger. It, well, it's not gonna be difficult by being larger, I should say, because they'll be very lightweight uh, with the way that we're making them. I'm not gonna cut out the this bit because that's not important, but I will cut out this bit. And I'll have to do some extra padding across here, kind of similar to what we did with the tail, where we filled it with upholstery foam and then we covered it, so it was nice and soft over the top. That's probably what uh, I'll do with this, to be honest. Something very, very similar. It's difficult, because when you're designing, you kind of have to think of it without most of your sculpting knowledge in mind. It's weird. It's a weird way of designing. I have the same thing with a tail, but I'm a bit more used to making tails than I am wings, truthfully. I think this will work just fine. There you go. So, I'll use these basically to bend my PVC pipes the ones that go down with structural support. Again, it is important to have this like little, little bit at the bottom because that will what I'll end up slotting it into the harness. But that's okay. We're getting there. Looks a bit weird, but that's fine. I really wish I had something flatter. Also, that's big enough that I can use that as a scrap. And just round that one out. We'll have to probably saw the end of that off, but that's okay. My PVC pipe is not going to want to go in that direction. Other than that though, this should be pretty moldable, um, which is a nice thing about using PVC. Okay, sewing machine, while well, I appreciate your assistance, I'm going to ask to take it from here. <laughs> I'm going to have to flatten this because this is going to be a pain. God. There we go. Oh dear, I like soft too. Heck yeah! You live in the best place in the world for LARP. The UK Euro scene is huge. 
we in the antipodes look on with envy. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a lot of LARPing places here. A lot of D&D places too, honestly. They, they keep popping up. We've had like two pop up in the last year. Like, it is getting very popular over here, which is a good thing as someone who also likes role play. Okay. <laughs> My wings! My wings! They are so curly. Okay, put this on this part. Put that on that part. And then, who did the egg? Huh? Who did the egg? George, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. We accidentally finished what I wanted to do really early, so I'm wearing it at the moment. I'm like, whoo, with my, my straps. But we finished that really early, and the embroidery takes a while, so I'm just kind of like doing some planning for the wings at the moment. Um, the only thing is the other wing is like semi-vertical, which is fine. It means my wings will look good stacked next to each other. But I'm not going to draw it, though. Not on my desk. <laughs> oh, dear. With me being in the country, there are no nerd places around. Any Antipodes? Yes. I missed stream? No, I don't think so. I don't think you've missed it. Also, Annette, welcome on in. Is she very crafty today, too? We're trying our best. Unfortunately, she's been very quick today and finished all her work in the first two hours. Which... <laughs> It happens every now and again. It's not very common. Normally it takes me a lot longer. <laughs> but uh, I've accidentally gone kind of speedy through this. And uh, so now I'm working on making some patterns for the wings. Now I won't be able to do the PVC stuff on stream, which is why I'm just pat like getting an idea of the size that I want them. Because I will need to go downstairs to do that. I just need the space really. I don't have that space up here. One day I'll have a craft room where I have the space to do pattern stuff. This isn't it, though. How's your day going, George? Are you, are you feeling more awake today? Also, I think, George, you left on Wednesday before we finished the dress, right? Did you get to see it? Because, oh, I'm so happy with it. I'm so, I'm so over... I love it. It's hung on the wall there, and every time I look at it, I'm like, yeah, we did it. It's such a cool dress. It, it's several times now nearly broken its hanger because it's so heavy, but that's okay. I like it a lot. Oh dear. Oh, you know what we could do? Which is kind of chill work. We could work on uh, my cosplay book a little bit. That might be a good call. Literally opposite foot is the other side of the world. Oh, I see. Oh, dear. I'm doing well, thanks. I fed my brother's cats this morning. They were all well behaved. Oh, oh yeah, that sounds lovely. How are you? I'm good. I am good. I am a little sleepy, but then we've streamed a lot this week. So I think I'm just a little, a little stream sleepy. Um, you know? Uh, okay, okay, we're good. Don't worry, don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> Need to juggle the needle up and down. You're all good. Um, but other than that, I'm good. I'm still riding the high of finishing the dress. Uh, move this across to here. Make that a bit easier. Find out where it starts. It starts there. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. So now what we need to do is move this across. Put that down. like I don't know there maybe yeah probably probably around there that seems about right and then actually wait if I've gone too far I've gone too far okay needle back up again needle back up again back back I shouldn't have positioned it so far that's okay that's okay that was my bad I'm just making my life hard for no reason it's fine that's like part of cosplay right <laughs> You're making things difficult for no reason. Okay, there you go. Right, now we need to get this so that it'll do a straight line down. Easier said than done. Okay. That being said, that actually looks pretty promising. That looks pretty straight. I might just give that a go. <laughs> Sometimes you can get it first time, so let's be hopeful that this is a first time 
poop. That'd be nice. Okay, put that in there and then give that a bit of a tighten because it is a bit loose. Um, make sure all that stays in. Very nice. Oh dear. Just remember that the Wiggles is having a fall. Oh my god. That's a random thing to remember, Jason. Oh, actually, stop for a second. Stop for a second. I just want to tighten it up a little bit more. Now that I'm happy with the positioning, make sure it's all tight in there. There you go. Now you can go. Sorry about that. Oh dear. I hear the gigs really kick off, and they did start at a pub band before they did kiddie music. They come into the city and they stay next month. I want to go! Ooh, you should. If that's like you want to go see, you should go. Also, I had a really good idea of what to do then. I've completely forgotten what it was. What was it? Because I don't think I can pattern the vertical one, because I need to go up that way. There's nothing there. <laughs> what I'll do is... Excuse me. Oh yeah, I was going to do my cosplay book. That's what I was going to do. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what this is, I can kind of go through it quickly with you. I believe it's this book. So basically, as I'm making the cosplay, I am making like a cosplay book, which has a lot of pictures and references to the costume in it, so that when I go to be judged, if, if I get in for this cosplay competition, to be fair, but if and when I go to be judged, I can hand this over and it kind of gives them some information about all of my making processes. That way they can ask me questions that might not be in this book, but the rest of it they can find within the book. And like we have like the assless chaps. They're still missing a few pictures and stuff like that. But it basically has how we made everything with step-by-step -step pictures. Yeah. I'm gonna did it. Oh, bye bye, Aban. Thank you so much for popping by. Wish I could go with my friends, but I can't. Oh, Jason. Is a sewing machine doing stuff on its own? Witchcraft. So this is an embroidery machine. Um, what it does is it kind of works it had like a 3D printer, is how I describe it to most people. Um, so you sort out your files on the computer. You get them all ready with the stitch orders and stitch types and stuff like that over a design that maybe you've done yourself, which is what we've done. Uh, get it ready for the hoop size, because every single uh, machine has different hoop sizes. And then you put it over on a memory stick and it goes. Quite a few steps but it, it is very similar to 3d printing in that way like you do the design you make it 3d you set it up for the 3d printer and then you send it to the 3d printer it's the same sort of thing you make the design digitize it get it set for the 3d printer and over to the uh, employee machine and then it does it for you and what you end up with is like embroideries that would be very difficult to do by hand like this yeah. mine i have to split into four because i have a small hoop but uh, yeah, that's all right. Some of my friends do cosplay make journals to go with their outfits. Yeah, it's like a really good way if you're going to be judged for it. I'd say if it's a smaller competition, maybe this isn't necessary, but for like big competitions, it's it's really handy. Um, so what I'm doing is I, I'm like going through each bit. So I need another picture for this, but this is just like my reference images. Uh, I think it goes into the petticoat. So because my petticoat's a little unusual, I did do a little bit more on that because it would have been more normal in this particular case to go for a hoop petticoat. But I went through the pros and cons on both and why I chose to do it like this, even though it's a lot heavier. Um, and tried to kind of explain that a bit. And then also going through the steps of how I made it. Yeah. Um, I also did the overskirt. I didn't really need as much information on that, but I decided to do it. The shoes, again, I've done the steps on how we did it, just so people know, and images that go along with that to kind of show my reference, how I did it, how they ended up looking. Yeah. Although I think with the shoes, I'm still going to add an extra piece of elastic, just for my foot comfort. Because <laughs> I'm not used, to, not used to having them that bare. And this, I didn't really have to do too much step by step with. Um, fortunately, a lot of it is just making a pattern and putting the pieces together, but I did show that I did make a mock-up pattern, and then I did the rest of it. So, yeah, stuff like that. Now, all of these are for the tail, apparently. I have kind of vaguely marked the pages of what I want, but what I would like to work on next 
would be the bodice and the dress because that was such a big piece of work. Do I have my highlighters nearby? I think that's them there. Since I've been using these to decorate all of my pages. <laughs> um, I don't know, it just, it just makes it look a little pretty, right? And when you've, when you've spent so long making something, you want to make it look pretty. So, uh, I'll pour this dress, I think, so I don't need a very long one. The only thing is that this is going to be an absolutely huge section because this is where the majority of our work goes in. I don't really add them fully to the book until they're finished just to make sure that I don't miss anything. Like, I don't have to add anything later on, because that'd be a little annoying. <laughs> but uh, once it's finished, I can add it to the book. And I'm gonna think the headpiece would probably be the next piece that I add. That's pretty close to being finished now. There you go. Can you see these colors on screen? They're very, very pastel for you. For me, they're like proper highlighter colors. having a little rainbow on each of my pages even if it's not the right colors like why is it so pastel for you that's ah, whatever <laughs> um right is this the good pen no that's the bad pen that's the pen i definitely don't want to use to write it's fine for pattern making but it's not good for writing so let's do the dress Dot dot after it, I can't remember. Yeah, I do. Okay. Dot dot. Right. So I'm gonna wanna have a good reference picture here. Not really. Oh, see the pink well, yeah. The pink's like there. The rest of it, meh. Oh dear. So I need kind of decide how big I want my reference image for the dress to be. Probably quite large. Um so let's maybe do a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. Because, how to put it, it's, it's such a big part of the costume, I want to document it properly. To be fair though, I can go over it now because for anyone who hasn't been here since the beginning, let me get some of the pictures up for the dress that I can show you where it started and where it is now. Sorry, I know this probably isn't the most interesting to a lot of people, but it, it's kind of an important part for me as entering a competition. <laughs> This is like not necessarily important cosplay stuff, but it's important cosplay competition stuff, uh, if that makes sense. So I have a big folder of work in progress, and this one shows it really well. So maybe I'll, oh, but so does this one. Um, I'll open this one so you can see that. So this is, I'll put it in the middle of my screen, how we started the dress. So I made it out of a tape pattern so that it was really, really close to my skin. I then made an, like made it up, but made it up like with the embroideries on it. We've got that image, I think on the screen already somewhere. Yeah, like there, so you can see the whole image of that. That's gonna be a really important one. So I'll actually probably wanna put a space to put that entire embroidery map. Um, because that embroidery map it, it dictates so much of what we did for this costume. So let's do like eight centimeters and just go down for a while, I think, for this one. Because um, yeah, we, we need, need some good space for that one. And that can be uh, reference and then uh, embroidery map. Helps me when I'm like using Word to like sort where things are. So we want the reference, but we also probably want a picture of the tape pattern, um, since the tape pattern is quite important. And let's get that underneath, shall we? We don't need a big picture of that because I'm sure the judges will know what a duct tape pattern is, but at least it shows that we did that specifically on the bodice to make it like fit very close to the skin. There we go. And I'm just going to change the thread quickly. <laughs> Since this is still going in the background, and this is something, I would like to get the two big ones done today. <sighs> Although I still need to paint the snakes before I can really put all this together. The typical website's about the Wiggles reunion tour. It'll be the Wiggles as you remember and love them, but we'll have a bit more grey hair and there's a bar. Playing all your favourite songs, but I'll show you won't forget. Oh my god, that's so lovely. Oh, heck yeah.
Heck yeah. There we go. And get that onto the bag. There. And then over there. 13 minutes on this next one, is it? It's not too bad, considering the first one was 21 minutes for the bronze. Get that under there. Get that back under there, and that can keep going in the background. In fact, actually, if we're working on this, we can have this a bit closer again, I think. There you go. Cool. Trim that off. Very nice. Uh, is that a progress book? Oh, did you? Oh, let's have a look-see, let's have a look-see. I just saw what's happening in the live stream chat. Don't mind me. Oh my gosh, so cute. Wait. Oh, that's coming along so well, purple. Oh, that's a very cute bean. Also, zero. Jason. What are you doing? I swear. Okay. So we'll need that, the embroidery map. Do I have any pictures of digitizing is going to be a question. So I have that image. Uh, the third and fourth image, I'll actually probably wait to talk about a little bit more. I just want to talk a little bit about the embroidery first, I think. Um, so this is really like one of the only places... Oh, I don't want to add a game capture. This is kind of one of the only places I can talk about it. I want to get that... I want to get that in there. Where is... I'm sure I have an image of the embroidery. Oh, there they are. I was going to say, like, I'm sure I have some pictures. Okay, so I have... Oh, yeah, I might want to talk about the woman embroidery separately, huh? So I will... One, two, three, maybe. So let's fit three. What? what how tall is this? This is... because I've got a lot to talk, to talk about here. <laughs> oh dear, okay, that's fine. Uh, it was a reflection you showed us, that's true. That, that's the reflection I showed you. That right there. God damn it. <laughs> it's perfect. Hello, hello! You did an amazing techno! Welcome on in! We finished the dress. I don't know if you were here for it, but we finished it on Wednesday. And now we're doing other things. <laughs> we're doing some headpiece stuff, and I'm going through my, my book just to basically add the bits that I need to add. So what I generally do is talk a little bit about the reference, not very much, like a few lines, um, and then go straight into my making progress, unless, process, unless there is any like explanation of why I've done something slightly differently. In this case, I don't think I have done anything differently. I think I think I followed quite a standard process until we hit the embroidery stuff. So what I'll talk a little bit about is my pattern making, um, probably, yeah. And maybe the zip on the back, because I did add a very big zip. Uh, so we'd start probably with... <laughs> the thing is, my reference is, just as a heads up, it, w it was this. Which is quite a messy reference, um, and <laughs> there's so many layers of armor. Oh dear. Yeah, it's like a, a really difficult reference to follow. Um, so I don't. We kind of just tried to pick out the main shapes from the dress, and yeah, I, we knew it needed to be tight. Yeah, it was tricky. It wasn't here, sorry. No, you're fine. <gasps> Techno, how are you feeling? Are you doing okay? That's a, that's a rough one. All right, I'll start this as... 
the reference once again has not been very helpful. I won't do that, I won't do that. I'll be nice. Uh, I'll say... The reference... Gave... A... Rough... Idea... To... The... Shapes and patterns on the are are more are more are oh no it's an M first so armor. But despite the lack, despite the detail, it was tricky. Ah, how would I put it? I don't know how I'd put it. I'll survive. Thank you for asking. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah, I hope. I hope long term it feels a lot better. Rough idea to the shape of the dress. <laughs> but the quality made it difficult to. But the quality did make it quite difficult. I'll put that. Yeah. Or the quality left parts open to interpretation. There you go. I have no idea how to spell interpretation. Open to inter interpret or interpret rare interpret. Oh god. Okay. In Shane, welcome on in. Shane, I don't suppose you know how to spell interpretation. <laughs> oh, there you go. Inter, inter, pre. Oh, pretation. Brilliant. Thank you. I wasn't sure if it was i or e. Oh dear. That's a good start. See, look how much I've written. That's perfect. Because all the images, they take up a lot of space. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I would not miss that. So when do they announce you as the winner? I, listen, I'd have to win first. And I think that's still... That's, I, I just want to get in. I just want to get in. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I am making headpiece parts. And they're coming along pretty good, honestly. Well, they're slow, but they're, they're, they're chugging along. It's, you can see it's chugging. We've got another one here. Um, let me see. Or maybe put that. Oh, I know what I can talk about. The reason I did the armor like this. Yeah, there you go. Um, I decided. Did uh, that I wanted. Try to mimic cosplay armor oh, with embroidery and beading. With embroidery and beading. Two whole sentences. We're speeding through. Uh, relaxing after a rough night of work. Working on plushies. Heck yeah. When do they announce it? It would be June. But I have to enter first. I haven't even entered yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> There's things I still need to finish. Um, but they will they will announce that in June. I think June 3rd. Which might be a Saturday. I'm not sure. No, it's a Friday. So I would be streaming then. Um, that's when they'll announce the people that are in. Because, I, I think, it might be a little later than that, but I'm pretty sure they're aiming for June 3rd. Which is a couple weeks after the deadline. Which makes sense. Um, there we go. A couple 
cool things. Things. Things is good. Ooh, do I want to color these? Sometimes I color my bullet points. <laughs> Have I colored bullet points re recently? I don't think so. I think I should color them. Yes. I I'll, do, I'll do it in yellow. I need a tight structure. bodice and a detailed plan <laughs> a big plan oh dear what are you trying to get into twitchcon amsterdam that's what i'm trying to get into they have five slots open for every type of craft they have five slots for sewing five slots for larger than life five slots for sfx and five slots for armor and i'm trying to get in for sewing uh, which makes the most sense because that's like what all of my skills are based on um but I need to have a photograph of the costume ready for the 20th of May, so just over a month away. That being said, we finished the dress this week. Um, I'll probably be finishing the headpiece next week if things go well. And then I just have the arm armor, and then that's the entirety of the body done. It's just wings, tail, and prop. Do you see how these bits, it's, we're getting pretty close. I think in the next couple of weeks, we'll have finished everything on the body. And then we can purely work on the tail and the scales and then the wing and the covers and all that kind of stuff. I might actually start doing the wings earlier just so that I have a bit of a, a jump start on that. But yeah. Also, thank you, Charles, for putting the competition and the cosplay in the chat. Once you say you are in, let the insurance come. <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe I won't tell you guys. Maybe I'll keep it a secret. Although I think Twitch would announce it, so maybe I might not be allowed to keep it a secret because I think Twitch would just say everyone who's in. But maybe I'll try and keep it a secret, you know? Oh, so Angel! Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome on in. We're getting my cosplay reference and planning guide together so that if I do get in, I have something to hand to the judges. Um, what else? spell embroideries for the longest time but now I've said it so many times <laughs> it's like it's in my head now constantly I have to spell embroidery which is a useful one for me since I do a lot of embroidery you know you don't make it and I'll have to make some changes made at Twitch I'm gonna do my best the thing is if I don't get in it's because I'm not up to par comparatively to the other competitors it's not because my cosplay is like just garbage it's just that other people entered are better. And I know some of the people that are entering are fantastic at cosplay. I already have an eye on who I think might win the whole competition. Um, because what they are making is just so ridiculous but amazing. There you go. Get some little highlights. Uh, right, you need more, don't you? Look at that, look at that nice neat edge, heck yeah. Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Um, yeah, that was like perfectly lined up. I don't do that too often. <laughs> oh dear. Right, we need to change the thread again and then we'll get it set on the next part. Honestly, it's actually quite comfortable wearing this petticoat. Because it's a little bit colder here today, it's like a blanket for my legs. I don't mind it at all. It probably won't feel the same way in May when I go to MCM London, but still. <laughs> oh. There we go. That on there. I'm, I'm very, regardless of whether I get into the cosplay competition or not, I'm very excited to wear the whole costume together. It's, it's just so fun, this costume. All the colors I like, so far, no part of the costume is particularly uncomfortable, which, <sighs> yes, I, I'm so happy with that. That might be my biggest achievement with this costume so far, is that nothing is uncomfortable. There are parts that are tight, but nothing is uncomfortable. And that is, I'll be wearing two corsets and I'm still not finding it uncomfortable. And I, genuinely, this is my biggest achievement here. It's just that, 
I've made two two corsets and it's still comfort. Heck yeah. It is gonna be warm. That's gonna be the only thing. It will definitely be warm. But uh hopefully it remains comfortable once we add the wings. Oh dude, that is impressive. Honestly, <laughs> it does really feel like my crowning achievement with this costume. Like, you know, <laughs> We put all this effort into this other stuff, but I do think the most impressive part of it is that I can wear it for a really long period of time and not be, not feel like, ugh. Like, cause the weight doesn't sit in any one place. Like, once the whole thing is on, it just feels like it's tight around the entirety of my bodice area. Like, all of this is tight. But it doesn't feel like the weight is resting on any one part. So it, it's not actually uncomfortable, it's just tight. And yeah, so I think once again, it probably won't be as comfortable in the summer because of that tightness. But still, like, I don't know, I'm very happy with that. <laughs> I'm definitely not gonna complain if that's that's the only thing is that it's a little bit hot. Cause like, you know, of course it's a little bit hot. I've layered this up to all high heavens. <laughs> Of course it's going to be warm, but if it could be warm and comfortable, that'd be pretty sick. I'd like that. <laughs> okay, how are we doing here? Is that... that Yippee! Yay! Uh, that might be... Can't tell if that's straight or not. I, I think it's not straight. I think it's close, but I think it's not quite there. I think it just needs to tilt this way a little bit. But maybe that's the... <laughs> I'm worried that might just be the... Ah -ha -ha. That might just be the view that I'm tackling this from that makes it look like it needs to turn. And maybe it didn't, but that's okay. Let's see. I just in very tight. <laughs> this is nice. Uh, let's see. How is that one? That's, that to me looks better. But sometimes just because it looks better to me doesn't mean that it is better. I'd say that wasn't right. I'm gonna do this again. Because to me, that's not quite. It's like a little tilted, but also it went quite fast. So I'm gonna put that there and then just tilt that that way a little bit more. Which I think is where I had it the first time. And then I was like, that's not right. <laughs> Doing me. That's all right. You know what? I'd rather get it, spend a little time getting it lined up so it was pretty close at least. How's that? No, more straight maybe? Yeah, that's more straight. Okay, that's much better. We'll leave that there. See, it's worth it taking the time. These are really short embroideries, which is why I'm not really doing anything else. Hooray for weight distribution, exactly. I learned really the hard way when I made the Final Fantasy XIV Lakshmi cosplay that weight distribution is so important. Like, you can make something that looks good, but if you don't distribute the weight properly, you will be so uncomfortable all day. And like, I love that costume. I, I was so pr proud of it and like, it was definitely a big step forward for me as far as growing as someone who did cosplay, but I had bruises on my hip that looked like I'd broken it. Like, it was such dramatic bruising um, that I have not forgotten it. It was just like, it hurt so much. And that was because of the weight, because of the way the dress was like hung, most of the weight of the dress went on one of my hips for the entirety of the con. And I wore that dress for like 11 hours in a row at one point, and my hip was just gone. I had a second bruise because someone hit me with their spear by accident. They turned around and they whacked me in the middle of my chest, like right, right here. And I had a really nice, uh, nice bruise. <laughs> It's like you learn in LARP costuming how to make things comfortable for all day wear. Yeah, it's like underratedly important. Like your cosplay can look fantastic, but if you can't wear it for more than like an hour, you're gonna struggle with competition stuff. Because you have to wait around in costume for so long. Like I had to go in at midday and then I had to stay there until the competition, which was at seven o'clock. So there's a whole seven hours later and I was still getting into it. I got into it like, you know, early. I got up early so I could like start putting it on. Uh, so I started putting it on about, probably it was about seven, but like I was in it at eight. It's 
to be judged at 12 and then take stage at, at 7. Oh dear. But you only found out where your judging was when you went in, so. Oh, uh, who knew Jose was a contact spot? I know, right? <laughs> I got destroyed, like, when I asked in a really big costume, so this time I have taken precautions and put a lot of structure into it so that weight is distributed because at the end of the day, with the methods that I'm taking, I can't really make it a lightweight costume. It's not really possible with the amount of beading and sequining and all that kind of stuff. Like, it does just add a lot of weight. But what I can do is make it so that weight isn't all on one part of my body. And even with the petticoat, we've added straps. And that way, it's not all around my waist where the rest of the corsets are. Because otherwise, having that extra weight there is really uncomfortable. Where the hell did my thread go? Oh, I put it over here. Okay. Looks like I've just lost an entire spool of thread. Where'd that go? That's okay though. Put it back here. Put that back here. The next one's 12 minutes. I should just be able to leave it to chug for a while and it'll be fine. And then. Well, there we go. Sorry, it's not a more interesting day for everyone. We've had like a really high energy week with lots of. Uh, big part to the project coming together so I guess it kind of makes sense that we have to go a bit chill on Friday <laughs> I don't I don't know if I could do that level of high intensity cosplay every single day I like the long streams though that was fun I might have to try and make it so that I can plan for more longer streams because they, they were a good, a good time we got a lot of work done in those right oh dear learn it's a plan for buff yeah bathroom logistics i nearly forgot with this costume like uh i think it was zero who was like by the way how are you gonna pee in that and that was we were already making things at that point so like <laughs> i i had to quickly alter a couple of designs to make sure i could pee because i was gonna have the trousers i got them up here for anyone who can see but these <laughs> Right now, as you can kind of see, they're attached to a pair of pants, uh, which we also made. These aren't just my pants, I swear, Twitch. Uh, don't get funny with me. These, we made these pants on stream. Um, but, uh, how do I, oh, there they are, okay. This is a bit, there you go, that's what I wanted. I was confused, I was like, where the hell do these go? But basically, we attached them to a pair of pants. Originally, we were gonna attach these to a belt, which would have made it impossible for me to pee because I wouldn't have been able to take them down underneath the costume. They would have just been stuck to me. And with all the layers, it would have been very difficult to unhook anything as well. So initially, my design would have made it absolutely impossible to pee. But then we added them, we made a pair of pants, which we kind of matched the color with. I didn't have quite the right color mesh, but I think it was close enough. We matched the, the, the pants to the rest of the costume. Not that you'll see them, but I did it anyway. And honestly, like a pretty solid pair of pants. I'll toot my own horn a bit. They're pretty good. Um, so they're very comfortable, which is nice. There you go, get back on the mannequin now. Um, what was I talking about with this? I need a couple of things, high structure goddess and a detailed plan for the embroideries. All right, let's talk a little bit about the bodice structure. Uh, so I decided to first There's a lot of words I want to say, but I don't know how to spell them. I think it's separately. Yeah, that looks right. Separately from the skirt that way I could add plenty of structure via boning. Is it boning or boning? I think it's boning. Yeah. First. There we go. There we go. Dress is finished separately. Thank you. <laughs> it was an E, was it? Okay. There you go. Now it looks like an E. Thank you. I was only, yeah. 
dress is finished, dress is on all social medias now, so you can see it anywhere. I will wear it again at some point now that I've made the alterations. I still want to add a few sequins as well, just like, you know, purple ones, so they're not too obvious in pictures, but they're there. Uh, otherwise, it's done. And uh, we are writing up the book for the dress now because... <laughs> goodbye, Pen. Actually, really goodbye. Where the hell did you go? I can hear you. But I can't see you. Oh, another pen lost to the void. That is my flaw. Oh, no, there it is. Heck yeah, my snacks caught it. Oh, dear. Bonning? <laughs> <laughs> Shifty, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, on its own. Yeah, on its own. Can we make it on its own? It's exciting. Shifty, my sh shoulder's almost there. That's also very heckin' exciting. I can't wait to see your pictures of your finished costume. <laughs> the thing is, your your entry date's a bit closer than mine, right? So you will hopefully see them pretty soon. Ah, <laughs> oh dear bit more embroidery which I'm gonna do on my eight hours of train journey on Monday and then I'll finish this assembly next week. Makes sense, that's smart. Oh, that makes the traveling a bit more entertaining as well. What was I going to put? Oh yeah, I was gonna write how I made the bodice, wasn't I? So, I made the bodice pattern using So that it sits very close to my body. This is the issue with writing sideways. You get to the bit in the middle and it's like, ugh. <laughs> MCM May, yeah. I know, it, I thought your your deadline's much closer because my deadline isn't until May. But is your deadline the end of this month, I think? Right? Ah, oh, dear. Just wanted to drop in and say hi. Oh, Sandman, thank you so much. Oh, my God. That's a lot, which is the most I've ever done so far at work. Well, Sandman, yeah, get some good rest. Thank you so much for popping by. That's like a busy day. Um, I also made... Second mock up to plan all of the embroideries. 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 There we go. That'll do for that page. That's about the base. The base is easy. Oh, actually, I should say that I, I sewed a, a full bra into it. Not an actual full bra, but I made a bra in my costume. Um, there's some fluff on there that I don't really want. There you go. I... play with an inbuilt bra <laughs> unless you need a lot of extra cleavage uh, in built bra I probably can't put that but um which works with the deep cut or deep V V at the front. There you go. That's good. That's good. We got that. Uh, what was the cosplay hint today? I haven't given one. No one's asked for one. <laughs> uh, end of the month, I have to apply, but I just need to have enough of the costume done for a full length photo shoot. So it don't matter if the details are done. Making the breastplate on Monday, though? <laughs> Is that why you're traveling? To go somewhere you can make it? That's very heckin' exciting. Oh, I'm kind of trying to do the same thing. I don't know if I'll have my uh, trident ready for the photo shoot, but if I can get the rest of it, the stuff that's attached to my body done for me, then then that's fine. 
that's fine. I'm entering as a, sew a sewing entry anyway, so like, I'm not sewing my trident. <laughs> that's the one bit that I will not be sewing. Also, <laughs> do you like my Mario straps for my petticoat? <laughs> Because I'm just wearing it because honestly it's a bit cold today and it's really nice and warm. I was trying it on and I decided just to leave it, but <sighs> I got my got my nice like we made some like backpack straps for this so that my petticoat's comfy. Yes, mom's here. I'll say, where's the dorset? Oh, lovely dorset's lovely. Uh, these are world-renowned blacksmiths as you arrive and able to do metal stuff for my costumes. Heck yeah, heck yeah. Oh dear, Mario stats. They are. <laughs> Mario straps. <laughs> oh dear. I, I, I don't know what else you could call them. They are just Mario straps, right? On this side, we have to talk a bit more about the embroidery, which is on the embroidery map specifically. Which was this. You guys, remember this? <laughs> Back in the day when this was our costume, you remember this? I actually, I think that has the inbuilt bra on it on that because I redid it for the um, the final dress, of course. But I'm pretty sure I actually built the bra into that as well. Um, so I had an inbuilt bra on three, mo like two mock-ups and one final piece. Um, I did so much <laughs> boning and inbuilt bras in that like two week period. I was just like, yeah, we'll just do another one. We'll just do another one and another one. I think I did reuse the cups and the the wires from one of them though. I'm not sure which one it was, but one of them didn't remain burned. Oh dear. I think this one did, to be honest. I think it was the other one that didn't remain burned, the actual mock-up. Oh, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Surprise, Mateus. <laughs> there you go. That's what I wanted. Oh dear. How are you doing? You're getting there. You're nearly done. That was a bit of a shorter one for you, wasn't it? It's 12 minutes. Ooh. And then we have one more piece for you, and then we have both of the outsides of my headpiece. And again, people have not seen a nice outside. There you go, that might be easier. So these would be like the big discs on the side of the head, but I want to embroider into them first before working with them. Uh, yeah, so we, we're doing that. We're getting those done. I need to get the inside bit done because I actually want this embroidery to look like it's merging to an embroidery on the other side. So I have another bit the other side that is just the top piece so that it can kind of link up together. Uh, I did something similar with the woman embroidery where basically I had them just line up at one point so that I can get like a bend in it. So yeah, we'll be doing that. Uh, probably end up beading these. No, actually I can't, can I? I'll have to bead them once they're once they're together, because otherwise it's going to look a bit funky. It's going to be difficult to sew. Also, I, I'm just I'm stopping drawing because this is nearly done, so it's going to need to be moved in a second. I can see it. It needs to be moved in a second. Oh dear. Ah, it's done a really good job. Once again, machine has worked very hard today. Deserves big props. Right. Let's get this next bit done, shall we? The last part. Ed. Ed. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you were loading. There we go. Oh. Oh yeah, those are the extra pits. Good. And remove this. Oh. So that. We have this squarely on there. There you go. And then I have to shift this around a little bit so that it fits kind of at the right angle. I think that's about it, honestly. Although that's quite folded in, isn't it? Yeah. Let's not fold that in underneath. Mm, is that right? Maybe like that? Oh, it's very difficult at this stage. The last one's always a pain to line up. <laughs> that looks pretty solid though. My only concern is I suppose it might be tilted out a bit, but we'll find out when I do the initial stitches. Let's see. I'll tighten it if it's good, but I'll, I'll not tighten it if it's not good. I'll save my energy. Oh yeah, that's a... Oh, actually... No, that's something. That's a nope from me, but how can I fix it? Mm -hmm. It might prove a little difficult to fix. Uh, that's okay, we'll give it another go. 
So what I might want to do then... Also, did someone follow then? Oh, Romanjo, welcome on in. Oh, Fizz, actually. Fizz a cute name. Fizz, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. I'm trying to work out where to put my embroidery so that it looks like right. <laughs> Which is easier said than done, honestly. Uh, I'm very finickety. And now that it's really thick, it's really hard to put the hoop back in again. There we go. I know I could loosen the hoop off, but I, I refuse. <laughs> I absolutely refuse to loosen the hoop. It's this tightness and it's staying this tightness. Okay, let's see. You wanna give that a go? Let me see if that's a little, a little closer to what you want. Okay. Well, that's kind of the same problem, actually. In fact, that's the same problem, but worse. But I think it starts in the right place. So let's uh, go back. Switch you to there, that's perfect actually. And then <laughs> it's difficult because I don't want it to overlap at the top, but I think it needs to go this way a bit. There you go. Probably about that much. <laughs> maybe a little more. And if I'm doing that actually, then maybe I should move that to there. That's gonna go at a weird angle now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, I'm gonna get my best, I swear. This bit's just tricky. Okay, get that. Oh, in there, in there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Be close. Oh, that's an angle, but why are you so low? Okay, okay, no, stop that. It's not right, it's not right, it's not right. Okay. I will get this. I refuse not to at this point. Um, that that one that was okay. I put this through like there, and then I need to go so long, and then just. Have it like that, maybe? Would that do it? I put it a bit higher up again. I wonder. Oh dear, got a craft project arriving in the mail! Ooh, are you gonna do it yourself or are you gonna do it on stream? Oh, that sounds really heckin' cool though. Okay, so you're still a bit tilted. That's the best yet. We're gonna stick with that. It's still a bit tilted, but it's manageable tilted. We'll take manageable tilted at this point. All of the others, oh God. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Jelly. It's fine. Just let it do its thing. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> Oh man, this makes lace color look simple. It's the, so if, if I had a bigger hoop, I could do this all in one go, but because my hoop's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, I have to split all of my embroideries into a maximum of 10 centimeters uh, wide and tall, which makes it a lot more complicated because then you have to line them all back up again. So this becomes what could have been on sun machines, a one, <laughs> it could have been a one embroidery at once, but for me it's four. <laughs> And so it takes a little longer just because of that. So I had to do spend a little time lining all of them up. But that's because I got a cheap machine. So my machine was only, well, I think it retails for around 600. But if I'd got one that was over a grand, then I wouldn't have this problem. But you know, you, you buy to your budget, right? I think I'm gonna do it myself. I don't really have the setup and also don't want to limit it to only when I'm streaming. That's, yeah, that's the, the thing with nice big projects. I don't have to limit to my streaming, but smaller ones, it always feels like I have to wait till I'm streaming again. Oh, that's it. So now I feel that, I feel that. Let me see. How do I want to talk about this embroidery map? Um, <laughs> it's difficult because we just followed the basic shapes, right? I followed the basic shapes on the rep. 
backwards. Reference. Reference. Yeah, whatever. Uh, to design the armor. I tried to lay. So that it would end up, oh, you okay there? Yeah. More 3D. The next bit, which you guys didn't see me doing, um, was cutting up all, no, was making patterns of each of those embroideries and scanning them all into my computer. <laughs> Take a look and oh no, you're fine. Thank you so much for the luck, Shifty. Oh dear. To be fair, I won't be going for too much longer today because I've nearly finished both of these embroideries and I might be either going out for dinner tonight or getting dinner in. And if I'm going out, we'll be going out reasonably soon. Uh, feel you hard. The only having a small stitching out. Yeah. <laughs> like, of course, if I had access to a bigger one, this would have been much easier. Uh, I don't know if you were here, Amazonia. Um, in the dress, there is 124 separate embroideries. <laughs> 124! <laughs> now that the dress is finished, I can finally count up all of the digitized files. And I digitized 124 embroideries. <laughs> all different. Uh, what's on the menu, possibly? I don't know. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm having a nice date. Jesus. I know. I was like, this dress has taken a really long time. Why is it taking so long? Maybe it's because I'm doing 124 embroideries for one dress. <laughs> Not including all of the embroideries like these, which we're doing for other parts of the costume. No, the dress alone has 124 unique embroideries on it. <laughs> it looks like it does too, to be fair. Oh dear. I thought my 40 leaves were bad. At least they were all repeats. I don't have a single repeat on my dress. Not a single one. Every single piece is unique. <laughs> um, whoa. It was something. Oh. That's why there's so many though. It's because none of them are repeated. Even the ones that look similar, I've had to do differently because of where they're fitting on the body. So, yeah, it was, it was a slog. Uh, what was I gonna do? Uh, yeah. I made patterns, patterns of each armor piece and scanned them onto. There we go. What was the next bit? Then it would have been drawing them all in Photoshop. <laughs> program or the ember digitizing program just so they know the m bird digitizing program to ready each Oh, God. Okay. But then what did I do? 
<laughs> what was next? Uh, I embroidered them on the machine? I guess actually I could talk about what I embroidered them into. Because I layered them with dissolvable fabric and curtain fabric, which was quite important. I layered the fabrics into the machine with Interfacing. Double interfacing. Uh, when I washed the interfacing out, it thick it stiffened the armor. Yeah. When I washed the interfacing out, it stiffens the armor oh this was such an intense process <laughs> okay sorry thank you so much for doing that <laughs> it looks great um that's another one i had to do that one quite a few times so i'll have some threads to remove but now we have both let me just draw around it with my mirror since that's the shape we're copying <laughs> oh dear it just happens to fit perfectly so Right now my Kree cut is going, I'm currently sending in a cosplay guest application! <gasps> oh, that'd be so cool! So you, you want to guest in a, a con? And then I assume, right, they'd pay your way there and all that kind of stuff. That'd be sick. That'd be sick. They should take you. I hope they do. That'd be so cool. Oh, actually, did I want to do it more at the bottom and then fix it at the top? Maybe. Like like this yeah just uh <laughs> manually fix this bit that's okay there you go <laughs> perfect <laughs> oh dear that should fit it about in the same place as that one right or is the the mirror a bit further forward i think if i do this and make sure that i hit out here it looks pretty good yes <laughs> where's my scissors for that there you go around that oh that's a bit of a weird point there we go just uh whoop, that off <laughs> and there we go now i have my outside of my head embroidery still need to do the inside pieces but i don't know if i'll do that today because i think i'd rather do a slightly shorter stream today in particular i don't need to i just oh did i I cut along the wrong bit, like a plonker. No, I think it's okay. <laughs> it's because this this line threw me off a bit, so I cut quite close to it by accident. But that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. I just gave myself a really small seam allowance. I'll live. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't have so much to do today, and also we've done really long streams this week. Oh dear. Nanani! Hello! How's the cosplay going? It's going really well. We've added straps to the petticoat, which I wanted just for, like, uh, comfort. I've made the outside of the two head pieces, which go this way around. So we'll have these bits on, on the head, like big Mickey Mouse ears. And we've started writing up some of the stuff to do with the dress in the cosplay book. Oh dear. I'm just trying to get myself a free summer holiday, to be honest. <laughs> Your boys eyes are quite art nouveau. Very. <laughs> Agree, they very. Yeah. I remember when we were designing them originally, I was like, this reminds me of something. <laughs> but you know what? I I based the design inspiration on circus fashion. So like like proper circus fashion. Um like not not like the creepy clown stuff that people post, but like big old circus fashion and that's why it's so 
over the top detailed with sequins and all that kind of stuff. Um, you have to make a progress book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is that you finished some pretty big parts, so you must have plenty to put in. And like, you always post in a, what do you call it? Progress pictures. So you, you should, I think you'll have plenty. You just have to put it together. Put each heart out, right? Oh dear. When I wait, watch the interfacing art, it's different to armor. Um, I went back into each piece and beaded slash sequined it. Sequin it. The shine better mimix armor. I think the details match the eclectic cosplay, to be honest. Those details suit this eclectic cos <gasps> oh. <laughs> Sorry, this is this is kind of off topic, but I said eclectic cosplay and I was like, wait a minute! There's loads of like crossplay hot takes on Twitter right now, right? And they keep popping up as like you might rec you might like this or you might like this or you might like this. Do you know how many cosplay hot takes I've seen saying like over designed and over detailed cosplays are trash and like you just do them to do well in competitions and they don't actually look good and I always say like <laughs> But I love my over and detailed costume. <laughs> I think it looks fantastic. Oh my god. I was like on Twitter yesterday like, wait, does everyone like secretly hate my costume? <laughs> like what's going on? <laughs> oh dear. To be fair, it is very, uh, what do you call it? It, it? You'll love it or you hate it. It's a lot of sequins, a lot of beads, and it's very gold. Like, I can kind of understand people not liking it, but like... I like my costume. I think they're grand. <laughs> oh dear. What are they gonna do? A good reference for a novice cosplayer, you could add the uh, dress planning pages too. Yeah, so the dress planning is gonna be quite a lot. I'm doing that in like four pages because there were so many separate elements that went into the dress that I, it's difficult because you kind of have to split it up into those elements. But I'm leaving spaces for the pictures I wanna put in so that we can, we can document with pictures. I saw that I saw that tweet too. Yeah! Uh, someone who cosplays over design embellished the hell costumes. There is an issue in the competition scene with Sakizo costumes in particular, doing shoddy lazy work and covering with tons of frills and beads. The thing is though, when I've been compared to other cosplayers in competitions, right? In competitions, a lot of it comes down to as well, did you make your embellishments? Or did you just buy them all on eBay? Because I was asked when I did quite an intense, it wasn't one of those ones, it was like one of the Final Fantasy XIV ones, but I was asked for every embellishment, which ones did I make and which ones did I buy? Because there were other cosplayers in the sewing category who had made every single embellishment. And at that point, I'm like, yeah, that's great. But it weeded me out because I didn't make all of them. So I think... You know, at the end of the day, people are having fun taking pictures in these costumes, you know, absolutely fair enough. But if you enter a competition scene, you probably will be judged harshly on that. Uh, you know, like, if if you don't make the parts yourself and somebody else did, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. See, it's more and more the competition was uh, fadedly flashy over construction and sadly as cons are getting less experienced judges, they fail to notice it. That's a shame. That is a shame. Like, I was really impressed with my judging the last time, for instance, I entered Crown Championships. Um, because they were... they were thorough. And comparatively, like, I, I was absolutely compared to the other sewing costumes there, which there were a fair, fair few of, where I was like, you know, did I make my own petticoat? No. Well, that cosplayer did. Uh, did you make that trim? No, I embellished it, but I didn't make it. Well, that cosplayer made and embellished their own trim. You know, at the end of the day, the, the the details of those craftsmanships were like, 
uh, you know, it, it was taken out piece by piece. And don't get me wrong, at the time I was like, oh! But like, in hindsight, <laughs> it gave me a good indication of the kind of level I needed to get to to win that competition. Oh dear. Well, I'm going to the perspective of well done work. Yeah. I know, I'm just trying to explain why people tweeting this stuff feel that way they do. Cosplay competitions are frankly tired. Yeah, I get you. I'm gonna be making my first cosplay, Vanity, what are you making? There was a big drama at New Megacon in Birmingham the other week. That's odd, because wasn't Megacon done by people who used to work at MCM? Or am I being a dumb? Am I being a dumb? <laughs> you mean not everyone wants to make their own lapel pins for their costumes? I know, right? <laughs> but if somebody does, and it's a big part of their costume, you get judged against it. And like, the thing is, I would never try to dissuade anyone from entering a cosplay competition because I think it's such a good opportunity to learn and to, to understand what people are looking for when it comes to the level of costume that wins, right? Um, I think never dissuade it. Even if it's your first ever cosplay, if you want to enter the cosplay competition, you should. But what I would recommend is to get that feedback after the convention. <laughs> like, whether it's by email or whether they do it at the time, get that feedback because then you know exactly what it took to win that competition and it's so useful they made stuff everyone's audio and intros and the person who won didn't make their costume Wee! Wee! that is that is winning the performance absolutely if you win the performance award with a, with a made costume you're all good but you shouldn't be winning an overall cosplay competition with a made costume in fact most cosplay competitions have that in the rules like you can enter with a costume you haven't made but you won't be able to win the grand prize that's odd did you pick and spin your own cotton did you make your own needles i know someone who did spin their own uh they spun their own wool for a costume i remember seeing that alice wonderland man is oh yeah i remember you mentioned that i may have already done that for my costume though i have to choose which level dress well there's a lot that you could choose from that would be fantastic right it's great character design isn't there like a fishy themed one as well Megacon was made by the people who created MCM. They thought us were bringing back the MCM as it used to be, but the parts they kept were the bad bits, clearly. MCM's cosplay competition has been, uh, has always been trash. Yeah, that was, if that's what happened, that's, yeah, that's appalling, to be quite honest. Like, absolutely people that make cosplays can enter, like, masquerades, that, that don't make their cosplay can enter masquerades. But normally in the rules, it should state that they can't win the grand prize because it is a cosplay competition. And a big part of cosplay is making when it comes to these kind of things. Did you buy EVA sheets or did you refine the hydrocarbons yourself? Good point. You know, this is what we should... I've used EVA. Shoot, I should have made that myself. My local con has a specific category for bought costumes. Exactly. I've seen people win the performance uh, award for a cosplay competition where they have not made their costumes. I've seen them win that but I've never seen them win anything else. And I honestly, that's kind of how it should be because then you still encourage people to enter regardless of whether they made or just wore the costume, but you don't place them higher because otherwise you're judging a factory built costume against one that someone's put hours into. And yet yeah, it's going to look different, but it's not really a fair competition, especially if it's a smaller competition. Spinning your own wool is pretty cool, yeah. I remember hearing about it being like, Jesus, they span their own wool. Heck. But like, again, this is, when you're looking at these really intense, these are, we're talking about like big costume competitions, not your local masquerade. When we're talking about like the online cosplay competition, crown championships, uh, Euro cosplay, all that kind of stuff. That is the level a lot of competitors will go to to get in because it is such a highly contested competition. <laughs> so getting feedback if you don't place or if you do place as well but from those kind of competitions can really give you an idea of what you were up against and why you didn't win and what things you could do next time to do better in that cosplay comp competition for me when i've entered masquerades the feedback has always been i am not a good performer because i don't i make a costume that's difficult to perform in so my performance is always lacking when i enter costume competitions where structure and like the the costume itself is what's being judged only it's just a craftsmanship competition often i am compared to the other people who entered who made more parts of their costume than me like the parts i made were good but i didn't go the extra mile for the costume like i didn't uh you know make my own trims and if i used a lot of that trim and i just bought it it, it, it i didn't make that um whereas Maybe if nobody else had, that wouldn't be something to compare against. But if somebody else did, 
then I'm compared against that. And the, the petticoat was one that stuck with me, knowing that someone made all the layers of their petticoat. And since then, I've made petticoats for all of them, because it's something that I know that I could be compared against. Also, love, thank you for the follow. It's very kind of you. But yeah, I, I just thought it was funny when I went online yesterday and they were like, over embellished cosplay suck ass and i was like no <laughs> that's that's my mood i love over embellished cosplays but then i'm also happy to spend the time to like you know plan and go into it i'm not just sticking an ebay trim on my costume to make it look good um i'm, I'm spending a very long time making every element so maybe i wasn't a target audience but it came up in my recommended you might like tweets and i was like twitter i feel very attacked <laughs> You can't, you can't, you can't recommend me things that are absolutely like trashing my costume. <laughs> it's been interesting. There's a really big thread going on on Twitter about, uh, uh, what do you call it? Cosplay hot takes. I think Amazonia, you commented on it where you were like, most of these are not hot takes. Most of them were not hot takes. Most of them were just like, you know, <laughs> you know don't take photos of cosplayers without commission kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah, don't do that. Don't take it without permission. That's rude. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate the effort. Uh, I, I guess I have one hot take, but it's not really that good. It's like, <laughs> and it's kind of an attack on the entire cosplay community, <laughs> which is not ideal. But I think the people that are consistently posting that they liked the old days or they liked how cosplay used to be are the people actively making the cosplay community uh, a worse place to be. <laughs> the current cosplay community a worse place to be like constantly tweeting or talking about how it used to be 10 years ago they're just salty that it became less niche really and that their own projects aren't getting now the recognition that they want it to get it's different now it's absolutely different now but um i think attacking tiktok cosplayers or attacking cosplayers that do a certain type of design or you know, well, this isn't how we used to do it. It used to be like this, 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 and this. Um, it actively makes the cosplay community a less hospitable place and a less fun place for new people. And they're the same people that will often be like, I welcome and encourage new cosplay. But if you do it like this, 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 or this, if you post on TikTok, I don't want to talk to you. How could you? <laughs> and I think a lot of the old cosplayers, not all of them, of course not all of them, but a lot of them, uh, are actively making the community a worse place at this point and need to sit down and reevaluate if they actually enjoy cosplay. <laughs> Do you actually enjoy cosplay anymore? Because there is no shame in leading the community for a bit if you don't actually enjoy it. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not maybe the best cosplay hot take, but I, it's... I guess just how I feel like the community is gone. <laughs> I agree. The older cosplayers who seem bitter and jaded that it's now easier to find niche craft supplies. It is exactly like that. Where like, and again, them having a go at people for finding those easy niche. The other thing is, I think a lot of cosplayers need to remember what it's like to make your first costume. Like sit down and think of how you were when you made your very first costume. Like, what were you thinking? Were you maybe just excited to make something and you're making mistakes, but you kept going and like stuff like that? Just go back to imagining how it was when you made your very first costume, because that's a lot of people right now. And holding them to the same standard that you hold yourself 10 years in makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. Like, because if you had to get held to that same standard that you had now 10 years ago, you would probably give up the hobby because it's too hard. It's too much. The first cosplay I think most of us make is a cosplay that you really like the character, you really like the design, and you're just having fun, giving it a go. Um, it's not with anything more deep in mind. I think the idea that you have to cosplay a very specific way because that's the standard other people hold themselves to doesn't really make any sense. Like, it's different if you're going into cosplay competitions and you're getting judged, but at the end of the day, the people judging you then will be judges. <laughs> <laughs> Not so random person on Twitter. Uh, girl didn't used to have lace fronts either. Maybe be grateful. Yeah. <laughs> Get off my carefully cra uh, crafted warbler lawn. <laughs> Get off my warbler lawn. 
<laughs> I remember when people used to use mod drop plaster or Paris to make cosplay armor. Be thankful we have Wobbler now. This is the thing. It's like, it's good that there are now cosplay shops. It's good that these things you can find in regular craft stores. It's a good thing that it's become more accessible to basically everyone in the cosplay community, except these few people that aren't getting the attention they want. <laughs> I think if you're struggling that much where, you know, you're having to make those sort of tweets, again, sit down, do you still actually enjoy cosplay? Is it still something you find fun? Because if you're just jaded and upset all the time, maybe you're not actually enjoying the craft anymore and you're just taking it out on other people. Really? It's a very long hot take is the thing. Like, I'm not going to write all that out. Like, you can clip it if you want, but I'm not going to write it all out because that's it's too long. But yeah, that would have been my hot take on there, I think, is a lot of people in the cosplay community don't actually enjoy cosplay anymore and are just using their previous audience to put down other cosplayers. <laughs> also, Andy, welcome on in. Sorry, you came at a kind of a weird time. Um, yeah, that'd be it. How does the cosplay community feel about co-labeling? It's expected you do everything yourself, like in good at props, but I have a buddy that's good at soft kit. Literally, as long as you credit the person who done the thing, uh, you're probably fine. Sometimes cosplay competitions will ask you to make the whole thing yourself. But outside of that, just make sure you're crediting them, really. Like, they'd probably credit you if you made their prop, and they'll probably credit you, you know, both, both ways, right? It's not for competition, go ahead and get as much help as you want need. If it's for competition, you need to have made everything yourself. Unless it's a competition, yeah. There's like the Clara Cow where you can like go in with groups, right? But most of them are individuals. Uh, where you have three people entering and one person made all the costumes, for example. Ah, uh, dear. Yeah, yeah. I look at more people getting into psych mean stuff is going to get easier. Yeah, exactly. Like the more people get into cosplay, the more accessible cosplay will be for everyone. And I very much stand by, it doesn't matter if you bought your cosplay, if you make your cosplay, if you find something that you enjoy in cosplay, you should be welcomed into the cosplay community. Even if you only enjoy making props, even if you never make cosplays, you just buy them. Even if you're fully doing body paint, you should still be welcomed into the cosplay community. Uh, there are definitely a lot of people that don't feel like that. Um, that... Like... It, I, again, I mentioned this earlier in the stream, but I do feel like a lot of it comes from the fact that when cosplay was a smaller hobby, everyone had to make everything. Like, you couldn't just go out to the store or Amazon and buy the latest anime shows costumes, right? That wasn't how it used to be, but now it is. And I think a lot of people are a little upset at that change. <laughs> ah, I need to start with something easy and get the hero's closet book so Pop do a costume from there! See, that's fine. That sounds really good. They Less important to start doing costume you want to do. I think it doesn't matter if it's the character you like the most, as long as it's a cosplay you're going to enjoy uh, to make, if you're gonna put the effort into making it. Like the first cosplay I did was Zorn and Thorn from Final Fantasy IX. Now, are they my favorite characters in Final Fantasy IX? No, they are very much side characters, a side boss on the third disc or something. That being said, it was a really fun cosplay for me to do because I could do it with my sister. We, we could both, wear a costume that matched each other and I love Final Fantasy so while no it was not my favorite costume in the world uh it was a really fun one for me to make and to cosplay in yeah it's more about learning how to make it rather than enjoying it yeah I mean difficulty this is the thing though some people will jump in with the most difficult cosplay on the world and that suits them some people will start at a much easier costume and that suits them i went straight from making dolls dresses to making wedding dresses and that's what got me into sewing but that's not everyone <laughs> i think it's important to acknowledge that everyone is going to get into cosplay in their own way uh maybe they make something ridiculously stupidly difficult for their first costume but that keeps them motivated whereas some people maybe don't find that maybe find that they need to try something easy a much quicker project so that they can get into it and i think that's fine i think it's fine ah oh dear it's more about learning yeah yeah and the thing is like learning how to use your machine if you have one learning how to hand stitch if that's necessary although i would say learn how to hand stitch everyone everyone learn how to hand stitch just do a couple simple stitches it's useful it's useful for fixing your clothes <laughs> but uh it's just really yeah useful skills to have and you, you pick them up when you want. Nev, welcome on in. I'm actually, I should really be wrapping the stream up. I've just been talking about the cosplay drama on Twitter. 
Uh, there's always cosplay drama on Twitter. That's the other thing. If you're getting into the cosplay community, Twitter is a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, you will be constantly recommended whatever the newest drama is. And some people really enjoy it. Some people, like myself, think that it's all kind of just stupid. <laughs> Most of the time, the drama is just, you know... <laughs> it's just someone's made a stupid statement and people are like, that was stupid. Whereas other people are like, no, I agree. It's nothing particularly exciting and it, it feels like it just goes round over and over again with the same few things. Oh dear, what's cosplay you made made you the most proud? This one. The cosplay I'm making right now makes me the most proud. I haven't finished it yet, but I'll tell you right now, this one. <laughs> it's the biggest thing I've ever attempted. It's gotta be this one. Uh, but then I think as a cosplayer, I'm always normally working on the most difficult and or newest thing for me to make. The only difference would be when uh, I, we had the lockdown and I couldn't go and get any new materials. That when I was doing all those closet cosplays, they probably weren't the most difficult and I was just trying to do them quite quickly. But outside of that, I'm always trying to work on my most impressive costume. Yes. Working on cross-stitch planning, heck yeah! There's always drama on Twitter. Yeah, you're on Twitter, I'm on Twitter. Uh, if you're looking for cosplay drama, I never participate. Um, I think most of it is... I think it's very funny, <laughs> if that helps. I think a lot of it's hilarious. But I also think most of it's like milk, you know? It's just mild stuff, in it. Like, <laughs> like someone wants you to iron your edges. Okay. Uh, eh. Like, you'll do better in cosplay contests, but is it necessary? No. Like, you do what makes you happy. It's, it's, I have such bland opinions on most of it that, like, I'm never really going to participate because it's just like, eh. I think the only hot take that I have is the one that I just said, which I think is a lot of people that are in cosplay for a bit longer have become very jaded and salty about the community and are actually now actively making it worse. A worse place to hang out in. Um, which is a shame. It's a real shame. Uh, and it's not everyone. I've been cosplaying for a long time. As Blue has been cosplaying for a long time. A lot of us have been cosplaying a long time and have we still have a passion for cosplay. I think some people have lost their passion and just take it out on everyone else. <laughs> Apparently the elitist if you make a tutorial for cosplay that isn't specifically beginner friendly. Is that the one that's happening right now? Well, I mean, by that logic, every single sewing pattern is elitist. Not being funny, they all tell you how to, like, set up your sewing machine. So, unless you want to take down the entirety of Simplicity and Vogue, <laughs> and McCool's, and Butterwick, and New Look, and uh, Tilly and the Buttons, unless you're looking to take down every single one, then, yeah. Most of them will recommend you to use a sewing machine because it's much quicker. It just is. Now, could you do the same thing on a sewing machine by hand? Yes, but it will take you 10 times as long. You can still use a tutorial as well. You just have to substitute things out. There's plenty of times I've watched tutorials and I can't do half the stuff. They'll be like, put that in your creek out. And I'm like, let me get my craft knife out. You know, most of us don't have every single piece of equipment and a lot of the time can substitute. It's a big part of cosplay is being creative and changing things around if you need to. Sewing patterns aren't beginner tools though. Well, a lot of them are though. A lot of them... What do you call it? They will literally say, beginner sewing pattern, beginner this. I mean, <sighs> not all of them are, but a lot of them are. Ah, oh, exactly, that's the whole point of creating. Yeah, it's that you alter things so that it suits stuff that you can do. I mean, for me, I've had to do that on this costume, and this is the most impressive costume that I've ever made. I don't have this sewing, the hoop on this that means I can, you know, very easily do all of my embroidery passes at once. So instead, I've had to split them all into 10 by 10 and do them like that. Now, would that ever go into a tutorial? No. They'd say, digitize the embroidery, move it to your hoop. For me, it was cut it up in Photoshop, take it to my digitizer, do all four separately, and then put it in my hoop and line it up every time. You know, it, it's never going to be in the tutorial, but that's what I do because I don't have the equipment. But it's not that the tutorial is elitist. It's just that I don't have everything necessary to do that particular thing. Okay, I mean the traditional ones that your gran had. There was a thought that you have to have a certain level of knowledge, but if you're talking about modern patterns, then yes, they are. Yeah. Ah. The ones like I see a lot of the time are like beginner-friendly t-shirt, beginner-friendly skirt. That way you don't have to worry about sizing your own stuff uh, because they already have all the sizes in there for you. Normally the patterns are only a few pieces and 
it's yeah the old ones were a bit of a pain in the butt because they were traditional and they required a lot of structure <laughs> the new ones are pretty chill um and again if you look at a pattern and it says it's not beginner like a lot of them will say like advanced maybe don't pick it up for your first pattern i think most people know to start with simpler ones and yeah yeah the only thing with patterns is i say they're a little expensive <laughs> a 10 quid a pattern and i normally only use it once for my costumes so i try to avoid them most of the time but not because they're difficult to work with, but because they're expensive. I'd much rather duct tape myself. That one I created, and that's half the fun. Yeah, it is. Uh, this is what we, I guess I mean when I say like a lot of the, the cosplay drama is ridiculous. Because it's not worth the reply half the time. It's like, oh yeah, you know, tutorials on, on YouTube for cosplay are elitist. It's not worth the reply. I mean, I'd also say a lot of the people making these statements are literally making them because they're outrageous, right? Or they're a bit ridiculous. It's not to say that every hot take is wrong, but like a lot of these kind of like, the ones like that where they use those uh, pop words, what do you call it? The, the specific words that are like, like elitist, like stuff like that, where it's a, a buzzword. They use buzzword. Yeah, thank you, Bay. I appreciate it. They use buzzword. Um, like elitist and so you can kind of spot them when they're not presenting a constructive opinion they're just trying to get drama for popularity sake you know all publicity is good publicity um, personally it doesn't really matter what community you're in you're gonna get people like that uh, I just ignore it <laughs> that doesn't surprise me yeah I mean there are comments made in cosplay that are definitely more elitist but again, most of the time those are not made by people that consistently make those comments. They do it once off to try and get some publicity towards their way. Um, and it's it's just, for me personally, as someone who doesn't really care too much, as long as people are enjoying cosplay, I just think that it's not really worth mentioning most of the time. I mean, this one was funny. I liked, the, I liked well, no, I didn't like, I felt personally attacked Twitter. When you start putting the hot takes on my page that my over-designed cosplay is trash. <laughs> Personally attacked. But, uh, but like, actually, no. I'm not gonna, it's not worth a reply. Because you know why people are writing it. And I think they were specifically targeting. I did, I do feel if you target a specific creator most of the time, it's not a hot take, it's an attack. But they were targeting specific, uh, artists. You only have cosplay characters of your own race, stature, and worldview. Yeah, come at me, bro. Heavy sarcasm. Well, this would be the thing, though. Uh, anyone who genuinely believes you should only cosplay your own race really means certain people from certain areas are not going to have a large variety of people they can cosplay. And even more, don't have a large variety of people they can cosplay that they actually maybe, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Not associate with. Uh, ah. <laughs> they, they feel, they connect with, they connect with. That's what I want. Did theatre have a reptile? <laughs> it's the kind of person that all my hobbies, heck yeah. <laughs> At least... That person was like the only person that did it in the trend correctly though. It was actually a hot take. Yeah, a lot of them really were just, I kept getting, like again, you might like this thread. I was only, I'm pretty sure I kept getting that because I think you commented on it. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Following Amazonia is a wild ride. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, most of the ones I had saying, you might like this tweet are things like, don't take photographs of cosplayers without permission. Um, it's like, okay, I got you. <laughs> and I was just like scrolling through my feed like, are people okay? <laughs> like this isn't a hot take, this is like, just common knowledge. Just don't do that. <laughs> Listen, my Twitter is a mess. <laughs> no, it's okay. It, it means whenever there's cosplay drama, I know that it's happening at least. <laughs> Someone called me an elitist in paganism for my statue. <laughs> If you have a hobby, you are more than welcome to enjoy your hobby to your time limits, to your own... Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> to your time limits, to your, like, money, to the amount of money that you can afford to spend. And with people or on your own to your discretion. Trying to dictate the way that other people enjoy a hobby makes no sense to me. <laughs> no sense. Unless it's stuff that is legitimately common knowledge, it makes no sense because everyone enjoys hobbies in their own way 
Like, I play classical guitar. I love classical guitar. Do I play classical pieces? Absolutely not. I play Ghibli music. I play video game themes. I do all that kind of stuff because that's what I enjoy. It doesn't mean that I wasn't classically trained. It doesn't mean that I don't enjoy the instrument. It's just like, that's the part of the instrument I enjoy playing. And it makes more sense that in the cosplay community, people approach it similarly. Like, let people enjoy the bit that they like. If they like dressing up but don't like making, cool. If they like making but don't like dressing up, cool. <laughs> Everything's cool. Uh, it, it just, it, for me, that just feels like the common knowledge. <laughs> let people enjoy the hobby the way they like it. Like, two years without cons, I need my internet cosplay discords. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, when I was going to the comments, I'd always just ask I could take a picture, it feels awkward otherwise. Yeah, because it's, you know, standard. You ask people. My statues I got 10 years uh, ago. <laughs> I have embroidery thread, yay! Oh, seriously talk today. Oh, not really. We were talking about some of the cosplay drama on Twitter, and it's not, it's not serious. <laughs> like, you know, I think the last part of cosplay <laughs> that legitimately deserved people to go look at uh, and like actually talk about except maybe now hearing what happened at megacon that does deserve a bit of chatting but um the last thing i can remember that i was like legitimately people need to know that this has happened and this is like not okay was what happened in the france uh one of the france finals where the person who won made prosthetics for their face and painted their face so they looked like a black man uh when they were a white woman and they won and then got disqualified from entering like the rest of the Europe ones because they did blackface <laughs> and won. <laughs> That's the last time I can remember a drama that I was like, that was worth getting in the news <laughs> because that was a big problem. Oh dear. Oh, Gavin now, oh everything, oh everything. Oh damn, that was rather dumb, very. Like the fact that they won as well. So they were looking for 100% accuracy and the person they were cosplaying was a black man and they were a white woman. So what they did was, so they looked more accurate to the cosplay and they stand by this. <laughs> they, uh, wait, that's not what happened, is it not? But I saw they made prosthetics and they painted their face like a black, they definitely weren't black. What happened? Amazonia, Amazonia. Put it out there, I've only heard it through news stories. Go on, go on, but correct me. I hate it here, yeah, me too. <laughs> No, but I don't. 99% of people are chill and nice and ch just want to see cosplay. It's the 1% that's a bit of a pain, but that's the same with any group. It, you know, once it's not a niche anymore, there will always be 1% that, you know, don't hold the same values as the rest of the community. I, I will wait for Amazonia to, to give us the, the real tea of what happened. I thought they won the French round and then were disqualified from entering Europe, but I could definitely be wrong. Your sad cosplay is amazing. Yeah, the symmetry comparatively to the stuff you've done is fantastic. A French cosplay made a silicon skin suit and presented to cosplay a black character from League of Legends. She entered the French qualifier for Eurocon and won, becoming the French representative. Then, so I got the first bit right, <laughs> but I, I miss, I've misinformed on the second half. Part of me don't think that that would be a problem with, but I don't think I'd be that offended. So I think the way that I take cosplay most of the time um, is if you can't take an element of that cosplay and wear it outside the costume, then it shouldn't be in the cosplay. Um, in the fact that like, if you have an ultra realistic gun and you couldn't take that outside because it looked like you have a gun, then maybe you need to change it a little bit in your cosplay so it has like a red tip or something so it's clearly fake. Same with like, you can't put like a Nazi symbol on your arm because that's a sign of hate. And in the same way, you can't paint your face black and go outside in it because that's blackface. <laughs> oh dear. It's just, it's just like, to me, it's reasonably obvious. Sorry, it's never okay to change your race to another real level of cosplay. Yeah, there's a big difference between using makeup to resemble a character, even if they are another skin tone and using blackface to make fun and insult people. That is true. But it, you cannot, in co like it is pretty much a rule in most cosplay competitions for this reason. You cannot, change your skin tone or like change your race for a cosplay because taken outside of that cosplay that has huge historical ramifications right and you might you know say there was there was no harm intended but if you took that element of the cosplay and wore it outside of the cosplay that is straight blackface and you can't do that uh same with and again it's not just that that it applies to 
I would say, if your gun is too realistic and doesn't have an orange tip, you're going to need to. You're going to put yourself in danger if you go outside with that. And the same with hate signals. So anyway, a few weeks after she qualified, I tweeted at the Eurocosway account like, uh, hey guys, what the heck? And then other people noticed and then everyone was like, oh heck, what the heck? And the French started fighting back like, nah, it's fine. You're being racist. <laughs> like, I, I, it's just, you can't take, I'm a black American. I don't think it's okay to do that. Well, this is a thing. If I said did that, right? And walked outside with the prosthetics she'd made painted black like a black man. If I did that, I'd be arrested for doing blackface in public. Cons are still a public place. You can't do that. It not only does it have, again, big historical ramifications, it's also like straight up illegal in a lot of places to do that. So no, you can't put it in your cosplay. <laughs> Oh dear. People cosplay Pocahontas without knowing her real story. It's hurtful. She was our first. I mean, Pocahontas was kind of done dirty by Disney though, really. Disney, Disney's the real villain here. <laughs> oh. Co Euro cosplay then uh, turned to Liv and said, look, you're welcome to keep compete, but you need to wear a different costume. So even bring a different costume next month or you're welcome to keep your qualifier at place and compete next year if you don't. Which is, yeah, I, I guess. The thing is, the fact that she won, I can kind of see why they did that. Oh dear. Whether things are acceptable or not, just not how much a racist issue it still is in the US. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, country to country to country, these things are still handled very differently. And so there's like, this is a, a whole of Europe competition, really. You, no! <laughs> it should ne they should never have won. In fact, they should never have been able allowed to enter and go on a stage like that. Yeah, I see. She then doubled down and I've been disqualified. They're disqualifying me for trying to be accurate. The thing is, you won't be marked down for the color of your skin. If you are a white cosplayer cosplaying a black, black character or vice versa, a black character cosplaying a white cosplay, uh, a white character, no, a black person cosplaying a white character, we're getting there. Um, you won't be marked down for your skin. Everything else, accuracy, fine. Like your beading, your armor work, your, your standing, you will be judged on that. But you won't be judged on your skin tone. There's no reason to do it. Sip some tea. I stepped into a serious clan, welcome in. I was gonna finish stream like an hour ago. <laughs> We've just been talking about cosplay drama. <laughs> the friends started making like dramatic videos about it, including my tweets and I got death. Oh my God. That being said, you did the right thing. I only heard about it after it was all over, but you did absolutely the right thing in that that situation. Like, that that wasn't okay. Keep your skin tone. Yeah, it's it's not difficult. In fact, if anything, it's easier. <laughs> Just the issue is the qualifier events for these competitions aren't policed by the event that runs the uh, finals. You're allowed to have whatever rules and organizations for the qualifier event that you like, as long as the person follows the rules for the finals, which has caused the issue. Yeah, so one thing I have seen pop up in cosplay competitions since this, and I think I think it's even in the TwitchCon ones, um, it basically says, um, accuracy doesn't include your skin tone or please do not uh, like do anything that could be considered racist that kind of stuff or uh, harmful to others basically adding a clause in the rules to be like don't you dare <laughs> that's a huge escalation oh people were when i say this was drama people were furious about this the fact that she got disqualified for being accurate when she actually got qualified for doing blackface and she didn't even get disqualified from what i can now tell that she actually would have been allowed back the next year but no she i like i knew she stuck to her guns with it i was aware of that it's one thing to have a debate whether it's to be accepted or not but that's way over the line but it is right we're not a costume exactly and you it just doesn't feel right again there's it's it's not distant history that blackface was legitimately a thing and to even though that might not have been her intention to do it was still very much out of line and again I, I stick to the same rule if you can't do it outside of your cosplay yeah don't do it in your cosplay <laughs> it's not a difficult rule to follow and it keeps you safe it means the community is happy everything's good just don't do it <laughs> this culture is not a costume exactly don't cosplay in uh don't cosplay an indian though you are not honoring our culture well this is the thing is I think a lot of the time people cosplay from different, like a lot of people uh, cosplay characters that aren't their race, but they don't change their skin tone. I think the rule that I specifically have been saying is only changing skin tones to 
unnatural colors is allowed. So like, if you're gonna be pink, you're fine. You're gonna be blue, you're fine. But maybe don't to paint your face black. <laughs> Uh, blackface uh, still is a thing in France. Mainland Europe remains incredibly racist still. Yeah, there, there are definitely still issues over here. In and out of cosplay, unfortunately, there's, you know, we're not so different from the rest of the world. But I think having these stricter rules so that people know coming into it. And again, I don't know why it's so difficult because like, it's not just obviously blackfacing, it's people bringing ultra realistic guns to conventions and getting arrested on the way. Like, we don't really have guns here in the UK, so if you walk on a train with a realistic gun, that you, it might be fake, it might just be a very well-painted Nerf gun, you're going to be arrested, and there's no reason to complain about that. You did that to yourself. Like, it, uh, yeah, it's stuff like that, where it's like, it's not difficult to use a little bit of common sense, and not everyone's gonna know what you're cosplaying, who you're cosplaying, why you need that gun. But most cons, again, will have the rule of keep the tip orange so that it, that doesn't happen. Ah, oh, dear. Amsterdam at Christmas. Uh, is a big on uh, DI representation, a big thing. I remember going to board game con and it was a sight to see non-white to the point where it came up to me to say it was nice to see me there. Oh, God. Oh, wait, I'm getting lost in the conversation. I'm so sorry. Uh, 4chan once called me... Oh, Silver, welcome on in. Thank you for the follow. We're having a very intense discussion, but you're welcome. Uh, called me a black facer for a cosplay that is a white actress. I was just a bit tan because it's in southern Spain. Yeah, I would this is a thing I've seen as well. Making mountains out of molehills. Italian cosplayers get shat on sometimes in the cosplay community. So anyone who doesn't know Italy, People will tan quite dramatically often in Italy, if you're Italian. You can go between being like my skin colour and like a fair few shades darker just by going outside. You know, it is just like how some people are based on where you live in the world. There have been a fair few Italians who have been uh, accused of black facing because they are darker, because they've been outside. And like, this is what I mean when I say most cosplay drama is not worth it because Attacking Italians for changing skin colour when they do change skin colour. Uh, it's like, there, there are legitimate racists in the community. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people will make in the cosplay community mountains out of these kind of things where they don't know the cosplayer is Italian, or a lot of the time they do know, but they don't necessarily, they've never met an Italian. <laughs> I don't know. Lucky Bar's called they've got a resident canary wolf as my friend. Is that for. Was that for a weapon or something like that? I never dressed. Yeah, no. Also, Furry, welcome on in. Or Fury, welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day. I think walking around with a realistic weapon would even get you arrested in the US, which is infamous for gun laws. Yeah, exactly. You just don't do it. You have to be careful. And I would say with anyone, if you're bringing a prop that is a weapon, wrap it up while you travel, at the very least, even if it doesn't look realistic at all. Even if. You know, it's obviously like a fantasy weapon. Wrap it up when you're traveling for your own safety. Because at the end of the day, if you get arrested, the only one that suffers is you. And you can avoid it by just wrapping it up a bit. Uh, I'm gonna dress as a cowboy with a water gun and uh, wash blackface off other racist costumes. <laughs> just <laughs> He was doing a photo shoot and a prop gun and someone called the police on him. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, it's happened quite a few times in the cosplay community. You have to be really careful. Um, yeah, wrap you, you wrap your shit up. Yeah, wrap it up. I know someone who has the cops called him in because of it. Well, uh, he wasn't even in a costume. Well, that's unusual. That, <laughs> I would not normally consider an umbrella to be like worth calling the police over unless you were like flinging it around. Uh, sword umbrella. Oh, is this a sword umbrella? Oh. Hello, that dress looks amazing. Thank you, Rafiki. Did you see it on the socials? Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. Oh dear. But yeah, anyway, what we're getting back to in a really big roundabout way is since that drama, I have not really seen a worthwhile drama in the cosplay community. And that one deserved to be front page because that was a problem. Outside of that, the ones that have been popping on my scene, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> just people, just people being stupid, really. And it's like... <laughs> that one, worth talking about. Worth, you know, putting a, putting some, some, like, this is an issue kind of thing. Everything since then. 
nothing burgers. <laughs> nothing burgers. Uh, just people looking for... I will say though, if you take part in the drama just for fun, I don't blame you. A lot of it's quite funny. But uh, if you're seriously invested in, in cosplay drama, there's not been anything. It's all been stupid. Oh dear. Shape of the umbrella and he is around 6'6". Six, six. Just regular umbrella. Just a, he's, just a, he's just a tall dude. <laughs> Thank you, Avike. I appreciate it. The drama early 2021 where the girl stole a wig from the computer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but this is the thing. It's not, it's, it's just funny. <laughs> it's not, it's not like anything to actually get upset over. It's just funny. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh dear. Anyway, on that note, I am gonna end my stream. Cause it's been four hours and I'm pretty sure I've just spent the whole last hour talking about old cosplay drama. And you know, <laughs> as much fun as it is, cause a lot of it is very funny. Um, yeah, I, most of it is just nothing burgers or stupid or just funny. And personally, <sighs> I'd rather be making cosplays. <laughs> For all that time I'm looking at drama, I'd rather be making cosplays, personally. Right, who we raid into today? Um, is B still- oh wait, no, B's doing Valorant. I don't really know Valorant very well. I know they had quite an intense community. Wait, what is- oh god, there's so many people I want to raid into now. God, oh dear, um, oh no, okay, okay, okay. We're going to be raiding into Isisia because it's Isisia's one year anniversary from the looks of it. So let's let's raid into them. Let's raid into them for their anniversary. Heck yeah. That's lovely. That's like, too many choices. I know, right? That's a good problem though. It's a good problem. Uh, yeah, I should stop so I can start getting ready for some work. Good luck. And good luck with making your armor on Monday, Amazonia, because I assume I won't see you then. So I, I hope that it goes well. Yes. Oh dear, Moriku, welcome on in. We're actually just gonna be doing a raid in Isisia. It's a one year anniversary, so we're gonna send them some love, cause a whole year on Twitch, that's a heckin' achievement. And they're a crafter too, so we'll send you plenty to some more crafter. Oh dear, take it easy. Yeah, everyone take it easy. Everyone have a good weekend. I hope that it, I hope that it heckin' goes well. And thank you, Todds. Yeah, going out for dinner, hopefully, for the first time in a really long time. So yes, exciting. <laughs> Very excited. Ah, uh, dear. But yeah, no, everyone have a lovely weekend. Don't worry too much about cosplay drama on Twitter. Uh, maybe once every few years something serious comes up, everything else is just dumb uh, and it's not worth your time. Just enjoy making costumes or wearing costumes or painting costumes or whatever. Just, just have fun. Uh, don't worry too much about Twitter. Twitter is the same in cosplay as it is everywhere else. <laughs> and hopefully we'll be back next week with headpiece stuff. That'd be the plan. So I'll see you all soon. Take care, everyone. Have a lovely rest of your day. Oh, dear.